हेलो सो अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन माय सेल्फ प्रतीक मिश्रा एंड वेलकम टू द गेट स्कोर बूस्टर सीरीज बाय आई एम एस गेट अकेडमी सो जस्ट गिव मी अ कॉल इफ यू आर ऑडिबल इफ माय वॉइस इज ऑडिबल प्लीज गिव मी अ थम्स अप और समथिंग इज माय वॉइस ऑडिबल टू एवरीवन इज माय वॉइस ऑडिबल ओके ओके राइट सो we were discussing about environmental engineering and we have started with raw water engineering okay okay thank you thank you varsha thank you prati good evening hitesh okay so we were discussing about raw water engineering and in the raw water engineering i have told you how to calculate the water demand using population forecasting then we have seen the different sources of water and after extracting this water from the different sources we have analyzed this water using water quality parameters once the water is utilized using water quality parameters this water is treated in a water treatment plant through different treatment units two treatment units we have seen first one is screening which removes the coarse suspended particles and one more point my dear students i have told you that these coarse suspended particles or suspended particles precisely are present only in the surface water they won't be available or they won't be there in a ground water then we have the aeration method in the aeration we brought this water in intimate contact with the air in order to increase the dissolved oxygen concentration and this dissolved oxygen being an oxidizing agent oxidizes the dissolved minerals present which are color causing minerals also it oxidizes the organic matter and it removes the dissolved gases as well right so this aeration method removes all these three treat all these three things right first one is dissolved gases the second one is your dissolved organic material or organic material and third one is your color causing compound now moving on with this the next treatment technique is known as sedimentation my dear students sedimentation is a technique which is used to remove any kind of suspended solids which are present right the entire theory of sedimentation depends on a single parameter which is known as the specific gravity as you know that specific gravity is defined as the weight of the solid of given volume divided by the weight of the standard fluid of same volume usually we take this standard fluid as water we take this standard fluid as water and this specific gravity can also be calculated by taking the ratio of the density of the solid to the density of the water right this specific gravity can also be calculated by taking the ratio of unit weight of solid to the unit weight of water this is unit weight of solid to the unit weight of water so using either of the two expression we can calculate the specific gravity and this specific gravity is solely responsible for the settling of any solid which is present in the water let me consider an example right i have two particle in which for the one particle the specific gravity is less on the for the second particle the specific gravity is more consider you take a feather you are a stone and drop it in a in a water in a box which is full of water you will find that a stone having more specific gravity will going to settle easily but on the other hand feather has less specific gravity hence it will take some time or it may not even settle in the water moving on with this the factors that are affecting sedimentation includes first one is the velocity of flow or turbulence if the velocity of flow is more or the turbulence is more the settling of the particle will be affected and if more will be the velocity of flow less will be the settling of the particle second one is the viscosity of the fluid again consider an example of a bottle full of honey and the second one full of water right honey being more viscous will offer more resistance in the settling of this particle whereas water being less viscous will offer less resistance so similarly if you again drop a ball in either of the two bottles you will find that the ball dropped in the uh, bottle filled of water will easily settle then with respect to the bottle in which honey is present right so if the viscosity of the fluid is more the sedimentation will take some time or i should say if viscosity of the fluid is more the efficiency of sed sedimentation will be less third one is the size of the particle my dear students please keep in mind whenever we take size of the particle as a factor affecting sedimentation back of the mind 
we keep the specific gravity to be constant when we are comparing two or more than two particles. We keep the specific gravity of all these particles to be constant, then only we can compare whether the size of the particle can affect the sedimentation process or not. If the specific gravity is same, then more the size of the particle, more will be its weight and more easily it will settle, right? So these are the factors which are affecting sedimentation. If we talk about the sedimentation tank, sedimentation tank is designed for the removal of concerned size of particle, my dear student. So, if you consider a water, a water sample, a water sample may have n number of sizes, right? n number of sizes of particle. We don't design our sedimentation tank for the removal of this smallest size of particle. We design our sedimentation tank for the removal of concerned size of particle and the settling velocity of this concerned size of particle is known as the surface overflow rate. This is known as the surface overflow surface overflow rate. So, my dear students, surface overflow rate is nothing but the settling velocity of the concerned size of particle for the removal of which our sedimentation basin is designed, right? So, all the particles of size equal to and more than the concerned size of the particle will be 100% removed and the particles which are of size less than the concerned size of the particle are partially removed, are partially removed, right? So, our sedimentation basin is designed for the concerned size of the particle and the settling velocity of the concerned size of the particle is known as the surface overflow rate. So, the plan area of our sedimentation basin can be calculated as design discharge divided by the surface overflow rate. Volume of our sedimentation basin is equal to discharge multiplied by the detention time. Please keep these formulas in mind because in majority of the question with respect to sedimentation process, these two formulas are precisely used to calculate the required factors, right? When we talk about the theory of sedimentation, my dear students, the theory of sedimentation is applicable for plain sedimentation tank or the sedimentation tank which is used after coagulation flocculation for treatment of raw water and it is also applicable for designing the grid chambers, it is also applicable for designing the primary sedimentation tank, it is also applicable for designing the secondary sedimentation tank, my dear students. The same theory of sedimentation is used for all the types of sedimentation tanks which you will be facing as a question in your gate examination. So, whatever you have learned with respect to the sedimentation tank, please keep this in mind that this surface overflow rate will always be the settling velocity of the concerned size of particle for which the sedimentation tank has been designed, okay? So, moving on with this, moving on with this, we have the expression for settling velocity. Dear students, this is the most general expression for settling velocity, right? This one is the more most general expression for calculating the settling velocity. This is the most general expression for calculating the settling velocity. You can mark it as important. And according to this expression, Vs is equals to four, root over 4 Gd into G minus 1 upon Cd. And this expression we have calculated using Stokes law. Stokes law we used to calculate this expression. Now, if the flow is laminar or if the size of the particle is less than 0.1 mm, if the size of the particle is less than 0.1 mm or the flow is laminar, that is if the Reynolds number is 1, same expression is converted into this form and this expression is Vs is equal to gamma wd square into g minus 1 upon 18 mu where gamma w is the unit weight of water, d is the size of the particle, g is the specific gravity and mu is the dynamic viscosity, right? So, this expression is only valid when the flow is laminar. Only for laminar flow condition, the second expression is valid. For most of the question, the expression that you will going to use will be for this laminar flow condition, my dear students. If the laminar flow condition is not there, it will be specifically mentioned that you have to consider the general condition of flow. Otherwise, you have to simply use this laminar flow condition and you can use the expression for settling velocity as 1 upon 18 gamma wd square into g minus 1 upon 18 mu, right? Upon mu. Moving on with this. So, our sedimentation tanks are of two types. 
the unit in which the process of sedimentation happens are known as sedimentation tank. These sedimentation tank are of two types. First type of sedimentation tank, fill and draw type in which we construct a tank, we fill water for 24 hours and in this 24 hours we leave this water. During this 24 hours, the settling will going to happen and after 24 hours, we take out the water, right? And whatever sludge is collected at the bottom of the tank, it is disposed of. The second type of sedimentation tank is known as the continuous flow type tank. In this continuous flow type tank, the flow will happen in the tank throughout the period. No stagnation of water will happen. As the name says, it is a continuous flow type tank. Means the continuous flow of water will going to happen in these type of tanks. Now, depending upon the direction of flow in which the flow is moving, right? Either the flow can move in the horizontal direction or the flow can move in the vertical direction. So, depending upon the direction of flow, these continuous flow type tanks are of two types. First one is known as the horizontal flow type tank in which the flow is in the horizontal direction. The second one is the vertical flow type tank in which the flow is in vertical direction. For the horizontal flow type tank, the partial removal of the particle less than the concerned size of the particle will going to happen. You will going to see that the particles which are less than the concerned size of the particle are partially removed. But for the vertical flow type tank, no such removal happens. Only the particle of size equal to or greater than the concerned size of the particle will be removed from the system, right? Moving on with this, we have the percentage removal. In order to calculate the percentage removal of particle of size less than the concerned size of the particle, it can be calculated as Vs1 upon Vs into 100 or it can be calculated as D1 square upon D square into 100. My dear students, Vs1 and V, this Vs1 and V, this Vs1 and V, Vs1 is the settling velocity of the smaller size of particle and Vs is the settling velocity of the concerned size of particle which is also known as surface overflow rate. Now, the efficiency, the efficiency of removal or efficiency of sedimentation tank depends upon the percentage concentration and the percentage removal. You have to consider both the percentage concentration and percentage removal for calculating the efficiency of the sedimentation tank. Now talking about the vertical flow type tank, the volume of the vertical flow type tank can be calculated directly using the expression volume is equal to d square into 0.11d plus 0 plus 0.785h. So using this expression, you can calculate the volume of the vertical flow type tank, right? Next thing is the displacement efficiency. My dear students, what we consider usually is if I draw, if I draw a depth of tank, right, like this, we consider that the velocity of flow is uniform throughout the depth. We consider that velocity of flow is uniform throughout the depth. But in practical condition, this velocity of flow is not this uniform. It is varying like this. It is varying like this. In the top layer, you will going to have more velocity of flow. But in the bottom layer, you will going to have less velocity of flow. Due to the frictional resistance which are offered by the surface of the tank, the velocity of flow at the bottom layer will be less and velocity of flow at the top layer will be more due to which the available detention time or the practical detention time you have provided to this top layer will not be there and the available time required or the time required for the particles to settle will not be there due to this more velocity of flow due to which the water which is present in the upper layer the particles which are present in the upper layer will not get the sufficient time to settle in the settling tank, right? Due to which these particles will move out of the system which were supposed to settle. This is known as short circuiting and the short circuiting is measured by the parameter which is known as the displacement efficiency. Displacement efficiency is the average flow through period divided by the theoretical detention time. More is the displacement efficiency higher is the displacement efficiency, lesser will be the short circuiting, lesser will be the short circuiting. If I talk about higher displacement efficiency, what I am saying is this V dash, this V dash F and V F are approximately equal. This V dash F and V F are 
approximately equal their values are nearby if displacement efficiency is more then the actual velocity of flow of the top layer is approximately equal to the theoretical velocity of flow which was supposed to be provided for the sedimentation tank so if you have more displacement efficiency your short circuiting will be less and the particle will get sufficient time to settle in the sedimentation tank moving on with this so we have a question here you need to calculate the maximum size of the particle right you need to calculate the max sorry minimum size of the particle that are completely removed please mark these two words first one is the minimum size of the particle second one is the second one is which are completely removed my dear student any horizontal flow type sedimentation tank or vertical flow type sedimentation tank in both these type of tanks the particle which are completely removed are the concerned size of particle for which our tank is designed right so the minimum size of particle for which our tank is designed is known as the concerned size of the particle and these concerned size of the particle are completely removed from the system so what we are asked is we need to calculate the ratio of we need to calculate the ratio of concerned size of the particle we need to calculate the ratio of concerned size of the particle for two different tanks right we have two sedimentation tanks so this is my tank number one and i have my tank number two right for tank number one for tank number one the surface overflow rate is given as 25 surface overflow rate is given as 25 meter cube per meter square per day don't confuse yourself with the units right this meter cube and meter square meter square and meter square will going to cancel out and you will going to have meter per day as the unit of surface overflow rate hello hello ankit hello so this surface overflow rate is nothing but the settling velocity of the concerned size of the particle for which this tank is designed right so if i say this d is the concerned size of the particle for which our tank is designed then the settling velocity of this concerned size of the particle is given as 25 meter cube per meter square per day similarly if the concerned size of the particle for second sedimentation tank is d dash the settling velocity of this d dash is given as surface overflow rate for d dash is given as 16 meter cube per meter square per day right you need to calculate the ratio of d is to d dash now it is a very simple question if you remember the expression for settling velocity for laminar flow condition the expression for settling velocity is vs is equals to 1 upon 18 gamma w d square into g minus 1 divided by mu from here you can directly see that this v square is directly proportional to d square sorry this vs is directly proportional to v square so this vs is directly proportional to d square so what can i say this what can i say from this is vs1 vs1 by vs2 is equals to d square divided by d dash square yes or no my dear students please tell me yes or no please tell me yes or no please tell me yes or no is this are you getting this yes or no just substitute the value of vs1 and vs2 and get me the ratio of d and ds okay okay just substitute these values so vs1 is 25 meet 25 meter cube per meter square per day and vs2 is 16 meter cube per meter square per day is equals to d by d dash the whole square d by d dash the whole square just take the root and get me the answer so d by d dash d by d dash will be equal to 5 by 4 and this 5 by 4 is 1.25 i guess my dear students 1.25 1.25 getting this getting this 1.25 so 1.25 is the ratio of two minimum size of particle which are completely removed which are completely removed from the two identical sedimentation basin so moving on with this we have the next question which says that surface overflow rate of a primary settling tank having discrete settling we will going to discuss what do you mean by discrete settling in just a few minutes right so the surface overflow rate 
is given as 18,000 liters per meter square per day. Let me just write this first. So surface overflow rate, surface overflow rate is given as 18,000, 18,000 liter per meter square per day, right? If I need to convert this liter into meter cube, by how much I have to divide? If I have to convert this liter into meter cube, I have to divide it by 1000, right? So, if I convert this liter into meter cube, I have to divide this expression by 1000 and by doing that, I will get 18 meter cube per meter square per day. 18 meter cube per meter square per day. So, this is my surface overflow rate. Now, reading the question further, the kinematic viscosity, the kinematic viscosity, the kinematic viscosity, right? The kinematic viscosity of water in the tank is 1.01 .01 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. Let me write this also. So, the kinematic viscosity nu is equals to 1.01 .01 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 meter, sorry, centimeter square per second. So, this is my kinematic viscosity. In the expression for calculating the settling velocity, dynamic viscosity is used, not the kinematic viscosity, okay? Okay, let's read it further. The specific gravity of the settling particle is 2.65. So, the value of G is given as 2.65, 2.65. Further, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second square. The minimum diameter, the minimum diameter in micrometer rounded off to two decimal places of the particle that will be removed with 80% efficiency, with 80% efficiency, right? The minimum diameter of the particle which will be removed with 80% efficiency that we have to calculate. Good evening, good evening. Okay, chalo. So, we are given with the removal efficiency. We are given with the percentage removal. We are given with the percentage removal. So, percentage removal is equals to 80%, right? If the question has said that, get me the diameter of the particle which will be 100% removed. So, I have simply calculated the diameter of my concerned size of particle, right? But in the question, what is asked? Tell me the diameter of the particle which will be 80% removed. And we know that the particles of size less than the concerned size of the particle are not 100% removed. They are partially removed, right? So, I need to calculate that diameter which is lesser than the size of the concerned size of the particle. For doing that, I have this expression that this percentage removal is equals to Vs1 divided by Vs into 100. Now, this Vs1, this Vs1, this Vs1, let me write this, this Vs1 is the settling velocity of particle of size less than the concerned size of the particle. And this Vs, this Vs is the settling velocity of our concerned size of our particle, right? This Vs is given as, this Vs is given as 18 meter cube per meter square per day. This surface overflow rate is nothing but the settling velocity of our concerned size of the particle, right? This 18 meter cube per meter square per day is the settling velocity of our concerned size of the particle. So, Vs is given as 18 meter cube per meter square per day. Let me just substitute and get me the value of Vs1. So, this is equal to 0 0.8 is equals to Vs1 divided by Vs. And this Vs can be substituted as 18 meter cube. This is 18 meter cube per meter square per day. Get me the value of Vs, Vs1. Get me the value of Vs1. It is 0 0.8 times of 18. Get me the value of Vs1. Quickly get me the value of Vs1. Get me the value of Vs1. Tell me the value of Vs1. What are you getting as Vs1? Get me the value of Vs1. Okay. So, Vs1 you have calculated as 14.4. This Vs1 is, this Vs1 is 14.4 meter cube per meter square per day, right? This Vs1 is 14.4 meter cube per meter square per day. Using this settling velocity, I can very easily calculate 
दिस साइज ऑफ द पार्टिकल गुड वर्षा गुड प्रशांत गुड थिरु सर गुड ओके कीप डूइंग द कैलकुलेशन कीप डूइंग द कैलकुलेशन सो वी हैव दिस सेटलिंग वेलोसिटी वी हैव दिस सेटलिंग वेलोसिटी वी एस वन एंड दिस सेटलिंग वेलोसिटी आई कैन यूज द एक्सप्रेशन वन अपॉन एटीन गामा डब्ल्यू डी स्क्वेर इन टू जी माइनस वन अपॉन म्यू राइट नाउ दिस म्यू इज नॉट गिवेन वी आर गिवेन विद दिनेमेटिक विस्कॉसिटी this mu is the dynamic viscosity but my dear students we know that we know that mu by rho is equals to kinematic viscosity nu right this rho w this rho w sorry this gamma w this gamma w can be written as this gamma w can be written as rho w into g right just write gamma w as rho w into g in the same expression it can be turned into 1 upon 18 रो डब्ल्यू इंटू जी इंटू डी स्क्वेर इंटू जी माइनस वन इंटू जी माइनस वन डिवाइडेड बाय म्यू सो दिस रो डब्ल्यू इंटू म्यू दिस इज द न्यू राइट दिस इज द न्यू सो आई कैन राइट इट एज वन अपॉन एटीन इंटू जी इंटू डी स्क्वेर इंटू डी वन स्क्वेर आई विल राइट इट एज डी वन स्क्वेर बिकॉज दिस इज बी एस वन सो आई राइट हेयर ऑल्सो डी वन स्क्वेर राइट so this is d1 into g minus 1 divided by nu just substitute all the values and get me the value of this d1 substitute all the values so vs1 we have calculated as vs1 we have calculated as 14.4 so this is 14.4 please take care of the units please take care of the units right so this is meter square per sorry meter cube per meter square per day and this new expression is in this new expression is in 1.01 into 10 is per minus 2 centimeter square per second so let me convert everything into meter per second right let me convert everything into meter per second so for converting this into meter per second i'll just divide I'll just divide this by twenty-four into thirty-six hundred. So this will be my meter per second. Next is one upon eighteen. G is nine point eight one meter per second square. It is already in meter per second square. Into d one, I have to calculate. So d one square g is two point six five. It is unitless minus one divided by divided by nu. This is one point. 01 into 10 raised per minus 2. It is in centimeter square per second. In order to convert it into meter per meter square per second, I have to just multiply it by 10 raised per minus 4. So this is in meter square per second. Do the calculation and get me the value of d square d1. Get me the value of d1. Do the calculation and get me the value of the size of the particle, which will be removed by 80%. just do the calculation and get me the size of the particle which will be removed by 80% do the calculation and get me the size so here you will get the size in meters right get me the size so 1.368 so 1.368 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 meters you will be getting but in the question in micrometers we are asked to calculate the size of the particle right so this 10 to the power minus 5 take one more so you will have this as d1 is equals to 13.68 into 10 to the power minus 6 and this 10 to the power minus 6 is nothing but the micrometer so our final answer is 13.68 micrometer so this size of particle will be removed by 80% efficiency correct so hopefully you have got this solution any doubt in this any doubt any doubt in this please tell me yes or no any doubt in this any doubt in this any doubt in this question if we are asked to calculate the size of that particle which is 100% removed we have calculated the size of the concerned size of the particle right but in this question we are asked to calculate the size of that particle Which will be removed by eighty percent, and we know that the particles of size less than the concerned size of the particle 
are partially removed from the system okay so hopefully this question is clear to everyone any doubt in this so we can move on so this is one of the important question that are framed in such a way that student usually don't understand this question properly so this is a kind of layered question in which two or more layers are there so whenever you are reading the question read the question not to solve it to understand it if you understood the question properly you will automatically find the solution for it right but if you are not understanding the question properly or not reading it properly then there are hardly chances my dear student that the question could be solved in one go right so whenever you are attempting any question first of all read that question properly read that very properly please understand that what is actually asked in the question and what actual calculations you are required to do if you understood that obviously you can very easily go to the solutions of that particular question moving on with this next question is a town is required to treat 4.5 meter cube per minute of raw water for daily domestic supply right so we are given with the design discharge so q is given design discharge is 4.5 meter cube per minute this design discharge is given a town is required to treat 4.5 meter cube per minute of raw water for domestic supply the flocculating particles are to be produced by chemical coagulation the column analysis indicated that the overflow rate is 0.2 the overflow rate is 0.2 mm per second please take care of the units please please take care of the units so you are given with the overflow rate of 0.2 mm per second will produce satisfactory particle settling basin at a depth of 3.2 meter the required surface area in meter square for settling is now my dear students many questions you will find in the examination where the extra data is given just to confuse your thinking process right in this question you need to calculate the area of the sedimentation tank that is required corresponding to this overflow rate that is 0.2 mm per second square now this is a very easy question but it is framed in such a way that you will unnecessarily denote your time in understanding that this produced by chemical coagulation then settling basin at a depth of 3.2 meter or these things are externally provided which are not actually required to calculate the surface area from the very basic formula of calculating the surface area we know that the surface area of the sedimentation tank surface area surface area of a sedimentation tank or plan area of a sedimentation tank is equals to design discharge divided by the surface overflow rate divided by the surface overflow surface overflow rate simple as that simple as that again a one mark question can be framed in such a way where some additional data will be there but the question will be like just divide the two entities and get me the final answer okay so design discharge is given to us as 4.5 meter cube per minute let me just substitute this so design discharge is 4.5 meter cube per minute let me write this unit also meter cube per minute and the surface overflow rate is given as 0.2 mm per second this is 0.2 mm mm per second right so just convert this minute into seconds and convert this mm into meters because the area that we need to calculate has to be in meter square it has to be in meter square so do this calculation so i am doing it <coughs> So this is 4.5, this is 4.5 meter cube per minute. So 4.5 divided by 60. So this will be my meter cube per second. And in the bottom I have 0 0.2 mm. So mm to meters that will be minus 3. So this will be my meter per second. So this meter per second and meter per second will cancel out and we are left with the meter square. Just get me the calculation. You have to divide 4.5 by 60. So you have to do 4.5 divided by 60 into 0 
and this 10 raised to the power minus 3, it will go to the numerator and it will be 10 raised to the power 3. Get me the answer in meter square. So, this answer will be in meter square. Get me the area in meter square of the sedimentation tank. Get me the area. This is 375 meter square. 375 meter square. Very good, Hitesh. Correct answer. So, correct answer, Hitesh. So, we have the area of area of sedimentation basin, area of sedimentation tank, area of sedimentation tank as 375, this is 375 meter square, this is 375 meter square, this is our final answer. So hopefully you have understood this, any doubt in this? Good evening, Shobhit. Good evening. Good evening, Thiru, sir. Correct, Hitesh. Correct. Okay. Chalo. Have we got this? Shall we go on? Shall we continue? Okay. Okay. Shall we continue? Okay. You are getting the good answers. Correct. Moving on with this. So, next is, once we are done with sedimentation, right? In our sedimentation process, we remove the suspended particles. But, we have left the fine suspended particles, the particles which are of size lesser than the size of the concerned size of the particle, right? So, let me just once again draw this diagram. In our water sample, we have all the sizes of particle. We have all the sizes of particle. We have all the sizes of particle. If we go for plain sedimentation, that is, if we have provided only plain sedimentation tank, then the particles of size less than the concerned size of the particle, this size of particle, if this is my concerned size of particle, if this is my concerned size of particle, then the particles of size less than the concerned size of the particle, they are partially removed. They are partially removed. They are not completely removed, right? Now, in order to remove the smaller size of particle, first we go for coagulation and flocculation and then we go for the sedimentation unit, right? So, in order to remove, if our water sample has more finer kind of particles, then we go for coagulation and flocculation in which we add coagulants and these coagulants going to attach all these fine suspended particles over their surface and these suspended particles will going to settle in the following sedimentation process. Now, understand this very carefully. What is happening in coagulation and flocculation? These finer size of particle, these finer size of particle, if let me draw this finer size of particle. This finer size of particle contains negative protective charge over their surface. This finer size of particle contain negative protective charge over their surface. So, there is one more particle like this and these particle contain negative protective charge over their surface. Due to which, when these two particles come in contact to each other, the kind of repulsion they will going to face and due to this repulsive forces, these particles are unable to agglomerate with each other. They are unable to come together, right? So, what we do is, we add a coagulant, we add a coagulant, we add a coagulant and what this coagulant does is, this coagulant neutralizes this negative protective charge. 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 If X is the coagulant that I have added and O is the particle present in the medium, this coagulant neutralizes the negative protective charge. And once this negative protective charge is neutralized, now these particles can come in contact with each other, right? For neutralizing this negative protective charge, amount, some amount of energy is required which is known as the threshold energy. In order to come over this threshold energy barrier, the fast mixing we do and this fast mixing provides the sufficient amount of energy that is required to come over this threshold energy barrier, okay? So, in coagulation, we add the coagulant and we do fast mixing in order to provide the sufficient energy which is required to cross the threshold energy barrier and once the threshold energy barrier is crossed, this negative protective charge is neutralized and this coagulant, what it does is, what it does is, it forms a sticky precipitate. It forms a sticky precipitate. So, a coagulant does two things. First is, it neutralizes the negative protective charge present over the surface of the particle and secondly, it forms a sticky precipitate and now this sticky precipitate, now this sticky precipitate, this is my sticky precipitate of the coagulant that I have added, 
This sticky precipitate is revolved throughout the medium and the finer size of particle over this sticky precipitate is known as flocculation. Is known as flocculation. Once the sticky precipitate is formed in coagulation by fast mixing, then this sticky precipitate is revolved across the volume, is revolved through the volume of the sedimentation tank. And this sticky precipitate over this sticky precipitate, these finer size of particles will be stuck over. And finally, this sticky precipitate along with finer size of particle, it is settled in the following sedimentation tank, right? So, coagulation is fast mixing, flocculation is slow mixing because we need, because we need to travel this sticky precipitate through the entire volume of our, of our tank in which flocculation is taking place. Then this sticky precipitate along with these fine particles are further settled in the sedimentation tank. This is how the finer size of particles are removed using coagulation and flocculation. And as you can see that this sticky precipitate is formed, hence huge amount of sludge is formed when the coagulation and flocculation treatment process is given to any raw water treatment plant, right? So here are few of the details that I have mentioned. So coagulation is done to agglomerate the fine suspended particles. This coagulation and flocculation is done to agglomerate the fine suspended particles which are further settled in the sedimentation tank. So coagulation, flocculation combinedly is a process responsible to agglomerate these fine suspended particles which are further settled in the sedimentation tank. So in coagulation, we go for fast mixing for neutralizing the negative protective charge present over the fine suspended particles. In order to do so, we use different coagulants. First one is the alum, which reacts with the alkalinity present in the medium to form the sticky precipitate of ALOH whole thrice. It increases the acidity and also the permanent hardness of your water. Its working range is 6.5 to 8.5. The next coagulant that we use is copperous, that is ferrous sulfate dot 7 h 2 or hydrated ferrous sulfate. It reacts with alkinity present in the water to form the sticky precipitate of FeOH whole thrice. It imparts color and increases the permanent hardness. Please keep this points in your mind because a statement can be formed in a multiple select question. The working range of this coagulant is 8.5 and above. Next is known as the chlorinated copperous. Chlorinated copperous again reacts with the alkinity in again reacts with the alkinity present in the medium to form the sticky precipitate of FeOH whole thrice and this chlorinated copperous works in a very wide pH range of 3.5 to 7 and above 8.5. The last one is known as sodium aluminate and sodium aluminate reacts with the hardness present in water. It reacts with the hardness present in water to form the sticky precipitate. It reduces the hardness because it is reacting with the hardness present in water. Hence, it will going to reduce the hardness and the working range is very strict. It only works in the pH range of 6 to 8.5. Okay. So, these are the four coagulants that we usually use when we go for the coagulation. So here are some of the data which can be directly used to calculate the sludge form. So 1 gram of alum reacts with 0 0.45 gram of alkinity as CaCO3. 1 gram of alum reacts with 0 0.45 grams of alkinity as CaCO3. Just one minute. So 1 gram of alum reacts with 0.45 grams of alkinity as CaCO3 to form 0.234 of gram of sticky precipitate. And the amount of sticky precipitate that will be formed in the medium, same sticky precipitate will be deposited in the form of sludge. Next is alum is used for the treatment of water supplies because alum does not impart any color to water. On the other hand, if you use iron salts like copperous or chlorinated copperous, no doubt both the salts have a very efficient pH working range, but still they impart color to water and also the handling of these salts is a very critical task, right? So these two salts are used for the treatment of sewage. Next is sodium aluminate being highly costly, this sodium aluminate being highly costly and having a very strict working pH range, it is only used to treat boiler feed water where zero hardness water is required. 
नेक्स्ट इज द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ मिक्सिंग इज गवर्न बाय अ फैक्टर विच इज नोन एज टेम्पोरल मीन वेलॉसिटी ग्रेडियंट एंड जी इज डिफाइंड एज अंडर रूट पी अपॉन म्यू G can also be understood as if you have a particle, if you have two particles which are situated at some distance x. If you have two particles which are situated at some distance x, the velocity of first particle is v1 and the velocity of second particle is v2. Then the intensity of mixing is defined by temporal mean velocity gradient g, and g is nothing but the relative velocity of the other particle. with respect to the first particle the relative velocity of the second particle with respect to the first particle divided by the distance that which are, uh, means divided by the distance by which they are apart so g is v2 minus v1 divided by x so g is the temporal mean velocity gradient which is used to define the intensity of mixing right the next i have already told you that flocculation is a slow mixing process in which this sticky precipitate is brought in intimate contact it is brought in intimate contact so that these fine suspended particles get stick over to a surface and can be removed from the system now in order to do so we require large dense flocks to be formed which can be very easily settled in the sedimentation tank so for forming of these large dense flocks what we do is we reduce the value of g as we move along the length of the tank and the value of g is reduced to almost half that is whatever g is there at the inlet so g at inlet g at inlet g at inlet is almost half of g at outlet means the intensity of mixing at the inlet end will be kept more than the intensity of mixing which is kept on the further end right so as we move along the sedimentation tank or flocculation tank the intensity of mixing keeps on reducing so that the contact opportunity of this sticky precipitate increases and this contact opportunity of this sticky precipitate in coming in contact with the fine suspended particle will going to increase hence more fine suspended particles can stick over to its surface and can be removed from the system right moving on with this so we have a question that a flocculation tank contains 2000 meter cube of water so directly volume of the tank is given so volume of the tank is volume of the tank is 2000 meter cube volume of the tank is 2000 meter cube which is mixed using paddles at an average velocity gradient of 100 per second we are given the value of g as 100 Hundred per second, right? Next is the water temperature and the corresponding dynamic viscosity at thirty degree Celsius is zero point seven nine eight into ten raised to power minus three. So the value of mu is given. It is zero point seven nine eight into ten raised to power minus three into ten raised to power minus three newton second per meter square. Newton second. per meter square respectively the theoretical power required the theoretical power required to achieve the stated value of g just a few moments back i have told you that g can be calculated as under root p upon mu into v so this p is this p is this p is the power of the shaft this p is p is power of the shaft power of shaft power of shaft and mu is the dynamic viscosity and v is the volume of the aeration tank so we are directly given with all the values we know the value of g we know the value of mu we know the value of v so just substitute all these values and get me the power in watts so whatever value will going to get of power using this expression will be in watts just divided by 1000 to get in in kilowatts so substitute all these values so g is given as g is given as 100 so 100 is equals to under root of p divided by mu mu is 0.798 into 10 to the power minus 3 0.798 into 10 to the power minus 3 and the volume of v is given as volume of v is given as 2000 meter cube volume of v is given as 2000 meter cube so this is 2000 meter cube 
this is 2000 meter cube okay so just substitute all the values and get me the power get me the power get me the power value get me the value of power calculate and tell me the value of power what is the value of power you will be getting get me the value of power this will be 15960 watts so 15960 watts is the power required but in the question you need to calculate the power in kilowatts so power is equals to 15.960 kilowatts so this will be your final answer so this is the amount of power which is required to produce the value of g as 100 this is the value of power required to calculate good 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 hitesh good prashant there is some calculation mistake check on your calculation mistake prashant okay chalo so is this question clear is this question clear to everyone is this question clear okay moving on with this the next topic of discussion is okay we have a question which says that the surface water treatment plants operates round the clock with a flow rate of 40 meter cube per minute again the discharge is given so the discharge is 40 meter cube per minute q is 40 meter cube per minute so discharge is 40 meter cube per minute the water temperature is 15 degree celsius and the jar testing indicated an LM dose of 30 milligram per liter. So, the LM dose that we need to do, LM dose, LM dose that we need to give is 30 milligram per liter. My dear students, jar test is actually used to determine the optimum coagulant content or optimum coagulant concentration that you have to provide so that you will get the maximum efficiency of removal of fine suspended particles right so using that jar test we get we got the concentration of alum which is a coagulant as 30 milligram per liter that you have to provide 30 milligram per liter of alum to this water to get the maximum efficiency of the removal of fine suspended particles the value of gt is given as 4 into 10 raised to power minus 4 eh, sorry 10 raised to power 4 for producing the optimum result you need to calculate the optimum, uh, sorry, alum required for 30 days in kgs, right? You are given with the discharge of water. You are given with the alum dosage. That is for 1 liter, you need to provide 30 milligram of alum. You need to calculate how much alum will be required in one month, right? For 30 days. So, it's again a very simple question, but the extra data which is provided may create a confusion in your mind, but that should not happen. What you have to do is just multiply these two entities. So total alum required, total alum required, so total alum required, total alum required, total alum required, total alum required for 30 days, total alum required for 30 days is equal to for 1 liter, 30 milligram is required. 30 milligram is required for 1 liter. Right. So, the discharge is given as 40 meter cube per minute. So, this 40 meter cube per minute can be written as 40 into 10 raised to power 3 liter per minute. This is liter per minute. And this is again in milligram per liter. This entity is still in milligram per liter. This is milligram per liter. So, this liter and liter will going to cancel out. We have milligram per minute, right? Convert this minute into days. Convert this minute into days. So, you will have, you have to multiply it by 24 into 60. So, these are the number of days. So, this will be in milligram per day. So, this is the total amount of alum required in one day. So, the total amount of alum required for 30 days, you have to simply multiply it by 30. So, this entire expression, this entire expression will give you the total amount of alum required for 30 days in milligram, right? In milligram. In order to get in kilograms, I am writing it again. So, this will be 
30 into 40 into 10 is power 3 into 24 into 60 into 30 again. So, just divided by divided by 10 is to power 6 and you will get the quantity of alum required in kgs. Get me the final answer of alum required. Get me the final answer of alum required. What will be the final answer? What will be the final answer of alum required? So, the final answer for alum required is 51840 kgs. So, this is the final answer for alum required. This is the total amount of alum which is required for treating this water for 30 days. Good, Hitesh, good. Good, Varsha, it is 51840. Correct answer, correct answer. Okay. So, hopefully, this is again a simple question. It is a kind of question which was already asked for one mark, but with some different data, right? Now, once we are done with coagulation and flocculation, we are still left with more fine suspended particles, which we haven't removed through coagulation and flocculation. The next treatment technique that we use is known as filtration. My dear students, the amount, some amount of energy is required by the water to pass through the filter medium. If I draw a filter medium like this, so if this is my filter medium, 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 let me just draw it quickly. If this is my filter medium and the water passes through this filter medium and if this water passes through the filter medium, this filter medium will going to provide resistance in moving of this water. This frictional resistance in order to overcome this frictional resistance, this water has to possess some amount of energy, right? So, if we are providing additional energy from our side, that type of filter is known as pressure filters. If you provide additional energy from our side, that is known as the pressure filters. But if you provide a standing column of water above this filter medium, if you provide a standing column of water above this filter medium and this height which is provided above the filter medium provides sufficient energy for the water to pass through the filter medium, then this type of filter is known as gravity filter. Right. So, if you are providing additional energy from our side, that is known as the pressure filters. And if you are providing the standing column of water, which possesses sufficient amount of energy, so that water can pass through this filter medium, that type of filter is known as gravity filter. Thank you. Thank you, Ankit sir. Thank you so much. So, the filters are of two types, gravity filters and pressure filters. Pressure filters, we provide energy from our side and for gravity filters, we provide the sufficient standing column of water above the filter medium so that this water can easily pass through the filter medium, right? This gravity filters are again of two types, slow sand filters and rapid sand filters. My dear students, depending upon the size of the particle of the filter medium, we have classified the filters into two categories in which the filter in which the size of the particle is of finer size, that type of filter is known as a slow sand filter. But if the comparative size of the particle is more, it is known as rapid sand filter. You can very clearly understand this. If the size of the particle is less, then this filter is capable of removing more amount of particle. And if a filter is capable of removing more amount of particle, it is showing more efficiency of removal. So, for slow sand filter, the efficiency of removal is high. But due to smaller size of voids, more resistance will be offered by the slow sand filter, due to which it will going to treat less amount of water. Hence, the rate of removal or the rate of filtration is less for slow sand filter. The efficiency for slow sand filter is more, but the rate of removal or the rate of filtration is less because the smaller size of voids will going to offer more resistance. On the other hand, the rapid sand filter has less efficiency and has more rate of removal because the comparative size of the voids is comparatively more than the slow sand filter, right? Next is, if we talk about the slow sand filters, the impurities are restricted in the top fine layer. The impurities are restricted in the top fine layer. Whereas for rapid sand filter, the impurity penetrates through the depth of the filter medium. 
For slow sand filter, the impurities are only restricted to the top fine layer. But for the slow sand filter, sorry, for rapid sand filter, the impurities are penetrated inside the total depth of the filter medium. Thank you. Thank you, Vipin sir. Moving on with this. So, this for cleaning of the slow sand filter, the top 1.5 to 3 centimeter layer of soil is removed. The layer of filter medium is removed because the particles are restricted only on the top layer of this filter medium. On the other hand, when we talk about the rapid sand filter, since the particles or the impurities have penetrated throughout the entire depth of the filter medium, the entire filter medium needs to be clean. And the treatment technique that we use for cleaning of this rapid sand filter is known as backwashing. It is known as backwashing. So, rapid sand filter is cleaned using backwashing. On the other hand, slow sand filter is cleaned by removing the top 1.5 to 3 centimeter of the sand layer. Moving on with this. So, we have the expression for rapid sand filter. My dear students, let me just explain one more concept here. When I talk about the head loss, right? So, if I consider a rapid sand filter, if I consider a rapid sand filter, for a rapid sand filter, for a rapid sand filter, if this is my filter bed, right? This is my filter bed. And for this filter bed, water is normally passing over this filter bed and getting pure right the water is passing like this and getting pure this is the unexpanded bed when the filter is working this is the unexpanded bed so this is the unexpanded this is the unexpanded this is the unexpanded bed but when this filter is cleaned this filter is cleaned back washing is done and this reverse washing this reverse washing increases the size of the voids and the particles are distributed like this the particles are distributed like this this back washing this back washing this back washing water is of high pressure water this back washing water is of high pressure water and it is sent from the bottom which takes away impurities along with it and these impurities are removed from the filter bed these impurities are removed from the filter bed but the bed size will going to increase this is known as the expanded bed this is known as the expanded bed an expanded bed and expanded bed will only going to happen and expanded bed will only going to happen during back washing right my dear students the friction offered by the filter medium depends upon the available surface area of the filter medium right either for normal working procedure or during back washing the surface area of the filter medium is not changing the surface area of the particles of the filter medium is not changing at all so whatever head loss water will be facing during normal working condition same will be the head loss this water will be facing during back washing during back washing so whatever head loss water will be facing during normal working condition same will be the head loss this water will be facing when it is going undergoing back washing right so since the surface area of the filter medium particle is not changing this surface area will going to provide same kind of resistance of force for the flowing of water either for normal working procedure or during back washing so here i can say that the head loss of the unexpanded bed is always equal to the head loss of the expanded bed please mark it as one of the most important expression many questions can be framed and many easy questions can be framed of two marks using this expression right now coming back to my topic so head loss through the expanded bed is always equal to the head loss through the unexpanded bed the expression for head loss is d is equal sorry hl is equal to d into 1 minus n into g minus 1 where d is the depth of the filter medium and n is the porosity of the filter medium and g is the specific gravity right so the porosity of the expanded bed porosity of the expanded bed only not the unexpanded bed expanded bed means when back washing is happening when back washing is happening the porosity of the filter medium has increased and that porosity of the expanded bed can be calculated as vb by vs raised to the power 0.22 where vb is the back wash velocity and vs is the settling velocity of the filter medium right so for any of the filter 
सरफेस एरिया कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड एज डिजाइन डिस्चार्ज डिवाइडेड बाय द रेट ऑफ फिल्ट्रेशन ऑल दीज थ्री एक्सप्रेशन आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट लेट मी जस्ट राइट डाउन वन मोर एक्सप्रेशन आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट हेड लॉस थ्रू द अनएक्सपेंडेड वेड is equal to the head loss through the expanded bed right this head loss of the unexpanded bed can be written as d that is the depth of the filter medium when the bed is unexpanded multiplied by the 1 minus n that is the porosity of the unexpanded bed into g minus 1 into g minus 1 is equal to d dash that is the depth of the filter when it is expanded depth of the filter when it is expanded into 1 minus n dash that is the porosity porosity of the expanded bed into g minus 1 so this g minus 1 and g minus 1 cancels out because the specific gravity of the filter medium before expansion and after expansion remains the same right so this g and g cancels out so one expression an important expression you have that is d that is depth of unexpanded filter bed into 1 minus n that is the porosity of the unexpanded filter bed is equals to d dash into 1 minus n dash let me just clean it so this d is equal d into 1 minus n is equals to d dash into 1 minus n dash again one of the most important expression that you should take care and this expression is derived keep uh, keeping in keeping in mind the head loss expression that head loss for the unexpanded bed is same as the head loss of the expanded bed so here we have okay so here we have a question which says that a city is going to install a rapid sand filter a city is going to install a rapid sand filter after the sedimentation tank using the following data we are given with the design loading rate of filter design loading rate is nothing but the rate of filtration right so design loading rate is nothing but the rate of filtration we have the design flow rate that is discharge is given we are given with the surface area per filter unit right for one filter unit at least 50 meter square of surface area should be provide for should be provided we need to calculate the total surface area of the rapid sand filter that has to be provided and we need to calculate the number of filter units that are provided if one unit has a surface area of 50 meter square so hopefully question is simple and very clear to you in order to calculate the total surface area so total surface area total surface area total surface area total surface area can be calculated simply as design discharge divided by the rate of filtration rate of filtration design discharge is given as 0.6 meter cube per second so this is 0.6 meter cube per second and the rate of filtration is given as 300 per meter cube 300 meter cube per meter square per day right meter square per day so convert this day into second you have to just multiply it by 24 into 3600 so this expression let me just rub few things so just multiply in the numerator by 24 into 3600 so this will going to give you the total surface area of the rapid sand filter so this is 24 into 3600 get me the total surface area of the rapid sand filter get me quickly the total surface area of the rapid sand filter get me quickly the total surface area of the rapid sand filter that is required it is 0.6 into 24 into 3600 divided by 300 so this will be the total surface area of the rapid sand filter it is 172.8 okay 172.8 correct so this is 172.8 this is 172.8 meter square so this is the total surface area of the rapid sand filter required now talking about how many filter units you need to provide if you provide one filter unit it should has a area of 50 meter square so this is the total surface area of the filter unit you need to provide 
okay just give me give me the number of filter units one filter unit has 50 meter square of area and the total surface area that you have to provide is 172.8 okay get me the number of filter units get me the number of filter units so number of filter units number of filter units number of filter units is 172.8 172.8 divided by 50 plus 1 plus 1 first calculate this entire thing that I will tell you y1 right y plus 1 y plus 1 okay so this plus 1 is for the standby unit this plus 1 is for the standby unit for the standby for the standby unit if any maintenance work is ongoing for any rapid sand filter unit, this standby unit has to be taken into consideration. So, we always provide the total number of filter units that are calculated plus 1, which is a standby unit. So, total number of filter units that you need to provide will be 5. So, this 5 is your correct answer, right? So, just take care of these minute details. Good, good, right? So, this 5 will be the total number of filter units that you should provide for this uh, treatment unit right for this treatment of raw water so a city rapid sand filter we have calculated the total surface area and we have calculated the number of filter units okay so hopefully this question is clear to you moving on again we have a question it says that 0.9 meter deep bed of sand filter having length of 5 meter and width 3 meter we are given with the entire dimension of our filter bed. We are given with the dimension of our filter bed that is depth of the unexpanded bed. So let me write it as unexpanded bed. Unexpanded. Unexpanded bed. Depth is given as 0 0.9 meter. Length and width are given as length is 5 meter and width is 3 meter okay then the question says that is made of uniform particles of diameter 0.4 mm so the size of the particle is also given as 0 0.4 mm 0 0.4 mm further the specific gravity is 2.65 and bed porosity is 0 0.38 so we are given with the porosity of the unexpanded bed as 0 0.38 0.38 the bed has to be backwashed at a flow rate of 3.6 meter cube per minute so we are given with the backwash discharge this is the backwash discharge and this backwash discharge is 3.6 this is 3.6 meter cube per minute we are given with the backwash discharge as 3.6 meter cube per minute during backwashing if the terminal settling velocity of the particles is 0.05, we are given with the settling velocity of the particle during backwashing that is 0.05 meter per second, right? The expanded bed depth in meter rounded off to two decimal places will be, right? So, you have to calculate the depth of the expanded bed, right? In order to calculate the depth of the expanded bed, if we have the porosity of the expanded bed, then we can simply use the relation that we have seen just now in which we have equated the head loss, that is head loss of the expand, unexpanded bed is equal to the head loss of the expanded bed. And using these two relations, we have this the depth of the unexpanded bed multiplied 1 minus porosity of the unexpanded bed into g minus 1 is equal to depth of the expanded bed into 1 minus porosity of expanded bed into g minus 1, right? So, there's g minus 1 and g minus 1 cancels out and you have the expression as depth of the unexpanded bed into 1 minus porosity of the unexpanded bed is equal to depth of the expanded bed into 1 minus porosity of the expanded bed, right? In this expression, we know the value of D, we know the value of N, but we need to calculate the value of D dash and we also need to calculate the value of N dash. In order to calculate the value of porosity of expanded bed, 
this n dash can be calculated as vb by vs vb by vs raised to the power 0 0.22 where vb is the backwash velocity in the question we are given with we are given with the discharge right we are given with the discharge that is 3.6 meter cube per minute right in my class i have already told you if we consider any discharge so corresponding to that discharge the perpendicular area we need to consider for continuity equation that is q is equals to a into v we write q is equals to q is equals to a into v this area is the cross sectional area which is perpendicular which is perpendicular to the direction of flow if the flow is happening in the vertically upward direction then the perpendicular to this flow direction we have this plan area right so this area that we consider is the cross sectional area which is perpendicular to the direction of flow and this plan area for calculating this plan area we have the dimension of length and breadth as 5 and 3 so we can use this backwash velocity discharge to calculate the backwash velocity v so right so for this So this backwash velocity, so this backwash velocity, let me just add one more. So this backwash velocity, backwash velocity is nothing but backwash discharge divided by the plan area, divided by the plan area. So this backwash velocity, this backwash discharge is given as 3.6 meter cube per minute. It is given as 3.6 meter cube per minute and the plan area is 5 into 3 get me the backwash velocity in meter per minute get me the backwash velocity in meter per minute for this settling velocity it is in meter per second right so we also need this backwash velocity in meter per second in order to get this backwash velocity in meter per second just divide this expression by 60 so you will have 3.6 divided by 5 into 3 into 60. So this will be the expression in meter per second. Get me the expression for, get me the value of backwash velocity. Get me the value of backwash velocity. It is 0 0.24. Okay, 0 0.24. Let me check 0 0.24. Zero point two four, zero point. Okay, it is four into ten is per minus three. Yes, it is four into ten is per minus three. So this is VB. VB is four into ten is per minus three meter per second. Use substitute this VB for calculating N dash. So this N dash is VB by VS. This is VB by VS raised to the power zero point two two. Just substitute both the values. So VB you have 4 into 10 is power minus 3 divided by VS. VS is VS is VS is 0 0.05. So this is 0 0.05 raised to the power 0 0.22 raised to the power 0 0.22. Get me the porosity of the expanded bed. Porosity of the expanded bed. Get me the porosity of expanded bed get me the porosity of expanded bed get me the porosity of expanded bed 0 0.574 correct so porosity of expanded bed n dash the porosity of expanded bed n dash is 0 0.574 so this is the porosity of expanded bed so porosity of expanded bed is n dash now just substitute all these values in this expression and get me the value of d dash get me the value of d dash so d we know what is the depth it is 0 0.9 d we know what is the value of d it is 0 0.9 and n is 0 0.38 d is 0 
and n is 0 0.38. So, 0 0.9 into 1 minus 0 0.38 is equals to d dash we need to calculate and n dash we have just calculated as 1.0.574. It is 0 0.5 seven four get me the value of d dash get me the value of depth of expanded bed get me the value of d dash get me the value of d dash d dash is zero point okay get me the value of d dash d dash get me the value of d dash one point three one okay good 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 one point three one meters one point three one meters so this is one of the most favorite question that can be formed in multiple ways, right? Good Hitesh, good Prashant, good everybody. Everybody is doing correctly, right? So this is again an important concept that can be asked in gate examination very frequently, okay? So please keep all these things very clear in your mind. So hopefully you have got this solution. Shall we move on? Okay. Okay. Okay, so we have removed all the type of suspended solids, we have removed all the type of fine suspended solids using sedimentation technique, coagulation, flocculation and filtration, right? Now we move on to removing the kind or pathogens that are the disease causing microorganisms which are present in the medium. If we talk about disinfection, disinfection means removing of disease causing microorganisms. On the other hand, if we talk about sterilization, it includes removing any type of microorganism which are present in the medium, whether it may be a disease causing or a non-disease causing microorganisms. In our water treatment plant, we need to remove all the disease causing pathogens which are present in the system. Currently in India, we go for treatment with chlorine, right? But for European countries, same chlorine freezes at low temperature, hence they go for alternate disinfection technique. But for India, we go for chlorination. For European countries, they either use, they either use ozone or they either use these, uh, uh, they can use ozone or they can use this ultraviolet radiations, right? So if we talk about disinfection, so first of all, disinfection is the process of killing of only disease causing microorganisms, which are known as pathogens. This disinfection can be carried out either using ozone. If we carry out disinfection using ozone, ozone destroys the cell wall of the microorganisms, hence leads to the killing of the microorganisms. The next chemical that is used, that is most frequently used for cleaning of well waters. This we see in most of the villages, when a pink substance is added to any well, this potassium permanganate is added to well water, for disinfecting that well water. Once this potassium permanganate is added, that well water is not used for at least two or three days, so that proper disinfection can happen and after that, that well water can be consumed, right? So this pink substance which is added to well water for carrying out disinfection is potassium permanganate and potassium permanganate increases the permeability of the cell walls, right? This pores we have over the screens, we have over the skin, these pores, these pores, same kind of pores are present on the cell walls of microorganisms. So these potassium permanganate increases the permeability of the cell wall due to which the fluid which is responsible for the metabolism of these microorganisms, it flows out and it leads to the killing of microorganisms. On the other hand, if we use chlorine as a disinfectant, chlorine destroys the enzymes Chlorine destroys the enzymes which are responsible for the metabolism of microorganisms. Hence, it leads to the killing of microorganisms. So, using either of these chemicals, when we can go for disinfection. Precisely, if we use chlorine, the chlorine can be added either in liquid or gaseous form. When we add chlorine to our water, it dissociates into, when we add chlorine to our water, so this Cl2, when added in water, it dissociates into OCl and OCl minus ion. It dissociates into HOCl and OCl minus ion. 
this HOCl is known as hypochlorous acid and this hypochlorous acid is the most destructive disinfectant or I should say the most destructive freely available form of chlorine, right? So out of Cl2, HOCl and OCl minus ion, HOCl is the most destructive disinfectant that is used and it leads to the major killing of microorganisms. All these freely available forms are available at different pH. This Cl2 will be available when the pH of the water is less than 5. For pH between 5 to 7, your HOCl will be there. And between pH 7 to 8, your HOCl and OCl minus ion will be there. For a pH of more than 8, your OCl minus ion will be there in the medium. So if HOCl is the most destructive disinfectant, we maintain the pH of water between 5 to 7, between 5 to 7 in order to carry out the effective disinfection, right? Next is, if we talk about the killing of microorganisms, suppose at any time 0, at time t is equals to 0, the number of microorganisms present in the medium are n naught. And after, at this time is equals, t is equals to 0, you have added any disinfectant, then this disinfectant will lead to the killing of microorganisms, right? So after any time t, after any time t, the number of microorganisms left in the system are nt. At time t is equals to 0, the number of microorganisms present are n0. Then you have it, then you have added disinfectant. Due to the addition of this disinfectant, it will lead to the killing of microorganisms. Hence, the number of microorganisms left after any time t is nt, right? So, this change from N0 to NT can be calculated using this Chick's law and according to Chick's law, NT is equals to N0 into E raised to power minus K into T, where N0 is the number of microorganisms initially present, NT is the number of microorganisms present after any time T and this K is known as the disinfection rate constant and T is the time after which you need to calculate the number of microorganisms. Hello, hello, Vavo sir, hello. Hello sir, okay, thank you, thank you sir, thank you so much. Okay, so hello. So this is the Chick's law that I have discussed and using this Chick's law, we can calculate the number of microorganisms that are present in the system after disinfection is carried out. Okay, so hopefully you have understood this. Moving on. <coughs> Moving on, we have a question which says that, a waste water is to be disinfected with 36 milligram per liter of chlorine to obtain 99% kill of microorganisms, right? If the chlorine concentration is maintained as 36 milligram per liter, the killing 99% killing of microorganism will going to happen. The waste water flow rate is 40 meter cube per hour. We are given with the discharge. So the discharge of waste water is discharge of waste water is 40 meter cube 40 meter cube per hour right the value of k is given as 0.23 per day the value of k is given as 0.23 per day sorry per minute it is given as 0.23 per minute if the depth and width of the chlorination tank are 1.5 and 1 meter respectively so the depth is 1.5 meter and the width is 1 meter and the width is 1 meter right respectively then the length of the tank in meter is the length of the tank in meter is now let me just short this question for you right if anyhow you know the volume of the tank then simply using length into breadth into height you can calculate this length right but we don't know the volume of the tank. In order to calculate volume of the tank, if anyhow, I know the detention time, right? If anyhow, I know the detention time, I can calculate this volume using the expression V is equals to design discharge multiplied by the detention time. Detention time, my dear student, is the time for which the water is kept in any sedimentation basin or any aeration tank or any kind of treatment unit. So the time for which the water or the waste water is kept in any treatment unit is known as its detention time, right? Now this detention time, this detention time T can be calculated using this expression, right? We know that 99% of the killing of microorganism is happening. 99% of the killing of 
माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म इज हैपनिंग इफ वी यूज 36 मिलीग्राम पर लीटर ऑफ क्लोरीन डोज राइट सो वी हैव दिस एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ चिक्स लॉ दैट इज एन टी इज इक्वल टू एन नॉट इन टू ई रेस्ट पर माइनस के इन टू टी राइट सो दिस एक्सप्रेशन विल गोइंग टू टेल अस इन हाउ मेनी टाइम इन हाउ मच टाइम इन हाउ मच टाइम 99% of the killing of microorganisms will happen my dear students if 99% of the killing of microorganisms is happening it means only 1% of the microorganisms are left in the system so if 99% killing of the microorganisms is happening only 1% of the originally present so the originally present microorganisms are n not if the originally present microorganisms are n not then after time t then after time t when 99% killing of the microorganism will happen then the number of microorganism present in t it will be equal to 0.01 times of n not have you got this have you got this any doubt in this any doubt in this please tell me yes or no any doubt in this any doubt in this so n t is 0.01 n not any doubt in this okay any doubt in this okay so we know the value of n t so again using chicks law n t is equals to n not into e raised power minus k into t so we know the value of k we know the value of n t so we have 0.01 n not is equals to n not into e raised power minus 0.23 per minute and the time here has to be calculated in minutes right so this n not and n not will going to cancel out get me the value of time in minutes get me the value of time in minutes get me the value of time in minutes because this k value is in per minute this k value is in per minute so here the time that will be calculated will be in minutes get me the value of time 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 in minutes so this t is equals to this t to get is as 20.022 minutes so this t is 20.022 minutes so t that you will going to get will be 20.022 minutes right so now we have the time using this 20 minutes no 20.022 minutes hitesh good prashant just check it it is 20.022 minutes we have to consider these two values also after decimal right for correct uh, accurate correction accurate answers not correction for calculating accurately right so we have this time now the discharge provided is in meter cube per hour please take care of the units the discharge here is meter cube per hour so your time has to be substituted in hour right your time has to be substituted in hour so just substitute the value of discharge and substitute the value of time and get me the value of volume get me the value of volume so this volume this volume is discharge multiplied by time so discharge is 40 meter cube 40 meter cube per hour multiplied by time that is 20.022 minutes and converting into hour it has to be divided by 60 right so this expression will be so this is in hours and this r and r will going to cancel out and the expression of volume can be calculated get me the volume get me the volume calculate the volume of the aeration tank uh, sorry disinfection unit get me the volume of disinfection unit get me the volume of disinfection unit my dear students get me the volume <coughs> get me the volume 13.348 correct 13.348 13.348 meter cube so we know the volume of the disinfection unit we know the other two dimensions of the disinfection unit so this 13.348 348 is equals to length into width which is 1 meter which is multiplied by height which is 1.5 meter get me the length get me the length l get me the length 
गुड गुड प्रशांत गुड वर्षा गुड गेट मी द लेंथ गेट मी द लेंथ ऑफ द एरिएशन टैंक सॉरी डिस इन्फेक्शन यूनिट गेट मी द लेंथ प्लीज गेट मी अप टू थ्री डेसिमल प्लेसेस प्लीज गेट मी द लेंथ ऑफ दिस डिस इन्फेक्शन यूनिट एट पॉइंट नाइन एट ओके सो दिस एल यू विल गेट एज एट पॉइंट एट नाइन एट मीटर्स समथिंग लाइक दिस कैन बी राउंडेड ऑफ टू एट पॉइंट नाइन मीटर्स नो प्रॉब्लम कैन बी राउंडेड ऑफ टू एट पॉइंट नाइन मीटर्स कैन बी राउंडेड ऑफ टू एट पॉइंट नाइन मीटर्स राइट कैन बी राउंडेड ऑफ टू एट पॉइंट नाइन मीटर्स एट पॉइंट नाइन एट ओके 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 करेक्ट करेक्ट सो होप फुली हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस क्वेश्चन होप फुली हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस क्वेश्चन येस और नो प्लीज टेल मी येस और नो होप फुली हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस क्वेश्चन प्लीज टेल मी येस और नो ओके, सो वी हैव स्टार्टेड आर रॉ वाटर इंजीनियरिंग विथ दी वाटर डिमांड देन पॉपुलेशन फोरकास्टिंग देन सोर्सेज ऑफ वाटर एंड आफ्टर दैट वी हैव चेक दी क्वालिटी ऑफ वाटर थ्रू वाटर क्वालिटी पैरामीटर्स एंड आफ्टर दैट वी हैव गिवन ट्रीटमेंट टू दिस वाटर राइट नाउ दिस वाटर इज स्टोर्ड इन दी सर्विस रिजर्वायर एंड थ्रू दिस सर्विस रिजर्वायर वाटर इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड यूजिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम टू दी कम्युनिटी From the service reservoir and water distribution system, hardly you will find question in gate examination. And if I talk about the important question, hardly any concept is such there from where a question, a good question, can be framed, right? So all the details that you read regarding the water distribution system are sufficient enough, and you can just simply revise all those theory part of it and get the answer correctly, which is asked in your gate examination. Now talking further, the next topic of discussion is. Waste water engineering. As I have already told you, my dear students, once you have supplied the water due to different domestic or industrial usages, this water is converted into waste water. Also, the water that we get through rainfall is also converted into waste water if it is not collected or if it is not used for rainwater harvesting. Right. So all the water which is flowing on the streets, which is flowing on the agricultural fields. are also the waste water which is known as the drainage right so when we talk about the waste water waste water is of two types which is known as sanitary waste water and the drainage right so sanitary waste water is that waste water or sanitary sewage is that sewage which is generated by the domestic or industrial activity drainage is the waste water which is generated after rainfall right if we talk about our sanitary sewage in our entire waste water engineering the primary concern or the primary thing that we need to focus is is on this sanitary sewage and especially the waste water which is generated after domestic activities right so if we talk about the domestic activity the waste water is generated either by the means of kitchen or by the use of toilets right in either of the two condition the amount of organic matter that is present in our waste water is on the higher side so the major concern of treatment of waste water is the kind of organic matter which is present so we treat this waste water for the organic matter right so if we talk about the waste water waste water is of two types sanitary sewage or drainage and for sanitary sewage the primary concern of treatment is the type of organic matter present in it right next is how to analyze the quality of this sewage the quality of the sewage is analyzed through waste water quality parameters all the water quality parameters that we have read for raw water engineering are also applicable for waste water engineering along with all those parameters few additional parameters are also required to study this waste water so the first one is the dissolved oxygen at any temperature the amount of oxygen which is present in the dissolved form in water is known as the dissolved oxygen right next is saturation dissolved oxygen from saturation dissolved oxygen what i mean is at any temperature the maximum amount of oxygen that can be remain in a dissolved form in water is termed as saturated dissolved oxygen with the increase in temperature your saturated dissolved oxygen will going to decrease even same for dissolved oxygen as your temperature increases the solubility of the gas reduces hence your dissolved oxygen will going to reduce and your saturation dissolved oxygen will also going to reduce next talking about the 
waste water quality parameters for that let me just add slide and tell you for this organic matter for this organic matter for this organic matter for this organic matter which is present in the sewage you will be requiring some amount of oxygen to decompose this organic matter correct you will be requiring some amount of oxygen to decompose this organic matter is this okay now this organic matter is of two types biodegradable organic matter biodegradable biodegradable organic matter and non biodegradable organic matter and non bio degradable and non bio degradable and non bio degradable organic matter correct understand this very clearly it is one of the most important thing right organic matter is of two types biodegradable organic matter and the non biodegradable organic matter the amount of oxygen required to decompose only biodegradable organic matter is known as bod or biochemical oxygen demand it is known as bod or biochemical oxygen demand on the other hand the amount of organic matter required to decompose both biodegradable or non biodegradable organic matter the total amount of oxygen required to decompose either biodegradable or non biodegradable organic matter present in the medium is termed as cod or chemical oxygen demand right okay so tell me out of bod and cod which will going to have more value bod or cod which will going to have more value bod or cod which will going to have more value bod or cod cod will going to have more value okay okay good hitesh good varsha good okay so obviously cod will going to have more value but there might be a case that in the medium no biodegradable organic matter is present so in that case only when no biodegradable when non biodegradable organic matter is non not present in that case only your cod will be equal to bod but for rest of the cases your cod will always be more than your bod is this clear is this clear give me a thumbs up is it clear just give me a thumbs up if it is clear please give it a thumbs up okay chalo when we talk about chemical oxygen demand it is the amount of oxygen required to oxidize both biodegradable and non biodegradable organic matter present in the system for biochemical oxygen demand it is the amount of oxygen required to decompose only biodegradable organic matter which is present in the system correct if we talk about bod5 okay if we talk about how to measure the bod for bod experimentation what we do is we dilute the sample we dilute the sample we dilute the sample so for this sewage we have this sewage we have this sewage we have with the sewage say the volume of sewage is x right x ml of sewage is mixed with aerated water 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 of yml is mixed with aerated water of yml and this diluted sample is prepared this diluted sample this diluted sample is prepared this diluted sample is this diluted sample is prepared the volume of this diluted sample is x plus y ml right so if i talk about what will be the dilution ratio for this diluted sample so the dilution ratio this dilution ratio or dilution factor one of the same thing so the dilution ratio dilution ratio or dilution factor dilution ratio or the dilution factor for this diluted sample it will be total volume of the diluted sample it will be total volume of the diluted sample divided by the volume of original sample divided by the volume of original sample present in the diluted sample so the volume of original pre sample present in the diluted sample will be x so this is how you calculate the dilution ratio right this is how you calculate the dilution ratio once you have this diluted sample you keep this diluted sample in an incubator keep this diluted sample in an incubator for a duration of 5 days at a temperature of 20 degrees celsius at a temperature of 20 degrees celsius 
बिफोर कीपिंग दिस थिंग इन एन इंक्यूबेटर यू मेजर द इनिशियल डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन ऑफ दिस डायल्यूटेड सैंपल यू मेजर द इनिशियल डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन ऑफ दिस डायल्यूटेड सैंपल एंड आफ्टर टेकिंग आउट दिस डायल्यूटेड सैंपल फ्रॉम द इंक्यूबेटर आफ्टर फाइव डेज यू मेजर द फाइनल डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन ऑफ दिस डायल्यूटेड सैंपल now using this initial and final dissolved oxygen of this diluted sample you calculate the 5 day bod you calculate the 5 day bod so bod 5 at 20 degree celsius is equals to initial dissolved oxygen minus final dissolved oxygen multiplied by the dilution factor similarly the bod consumed is bod ultimate into 1 minus e raised to power minus kt and bod consumed is equals to bod ultimate into 1 minus 10 raised to power minus kd into t when you use kd used to the base 10 when you use k used to the base e right so this bod 5 that you have calculated is the bod consumed it is the bod consumed right it is the bod consumed that is the amount of bod that has been removed from the system if we talk about the amount of bod that is left in the system it can be calculated by the expression of bod remaining so bod remaining is equals to bod ultimate into e raised to power minus k into t similarly if you use to the base 10 so bod remaining is bod ultimate into 10 raised to power minus kd into t and this kd also varies with temperature the expression for this variation of kd is kd at any temperature t is equals to kd at 20 degree celsius into 1.047 raised to the power t minus 20 okay so these expression are the important expression when we deal with the questions of bod and a sure short question you can expect of bod in your gate examination so this is one of the question which is already there in your gate exam just answer this question and tell me this is a kind of multiple select question tell me how many options are correct tell me how many options are correct which of the following statements are correct or incorrect if bod5 is less than cod bod5 equal to cod or bod5 greater than cod bod5 not equal to cod tell me a and b are correct a and b are correct okay a and b are correct okay <coughs> my dear student just understand this bod at any time t is equals to bod ultimate into 1 minus e raised to power minus k into t right bod ultimate is the total amount of organic matter present in the system bod ultimate is the amount of oxygen required to decompose all the organic matter present in the system if you have biodegradable organic matter the total amount of oxygen required to decompose the entire biodegradable organic matter in the system it is your ultimate bod right if we talk about bod5 if we talk about bod5 so bod5 can be understood as the amount of decomposition that happened in 5 days you supply oxygen by adding aerated water this dissolved oxygen will carry out the decomposition of the organic matter so the amount of decomposition that will happen in 5 days may not be equal to the total amount of decomposition that is actually required to happen so this bod5 is always is always less than is always less than your ultimate bod or you can directly you can directly remember it as this bod5 this bod5 is approximately 68 percent times of your bod ultimate is 60 percent times of your bod ultimate now tell me your final answer keeping this in your point keeping this in your mind again read the question and tell me the final answer so you have to tell me which all options are correct so obviously bod5 is always less than cod so option number a is correct can bod5 be equal to cod can bod5 be equal to cod yes or no can bod5 be equal to cod please tell me yes or no please tell me yes or no can bod5 be equal to cod no so bod 
ओनली अल्टीमेट बीओडी कैन बी इक्वल टू सीओडी इफ देर इज नो बायोडिग्रेडेबल ऑर्गेनिक मैटर प्रेजेंट इन द सिस्टम बट नॉट इन एनी केस बीओडी फाइव विल इक्वल टू सीओडी नेक्स्ट इज बीओडी फाइव इज मोर देन सीओडी नो दिस ऑप्शन इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट BOD5 is not equal to COD. Yes, this option is correct. It will never be equal to COD. So option number A and option number D are correct. So Hitesh has already given me the correct answer. Good. So this is one of the question. Next is following observations are being made on a 8% dilution of wastewater. Initial DO of the diluted sample is 4.5 milligram per liter. DO of the sample after five days of incubation is 1.5 milligram per liter. You have to calculate the five day BOD at 20 degree Celsius, right? So first thing is this 8% dilution of wastewater means this 8% dilution of wastewater means you can understand this like this and always remember in the manner I am telling you, right? You will never going to face confusion if you remember this dilution, 8% dilution in the manner I am telling you, right? So this 8% dilution, 8% dilution means, 8% dilution means 8 ml of sewage, 8 ml of sewage is mixed with 92 ml of, is mixed with 92 ml of aerated water, is mixed with 92 ml of aerated water to give me, to give me the 100 ml of the diluted sample. To give me the 100 ml of the diluted sample. To give me the 100 ml of diluted sample. Get me the dilution ratio for this diluted sample. So dilution ratio for this diluted sample is equals to the total volume of the diluted sample that is 100 ml divided by the volume of the original sample present in the diluted sample. So the volume of original sample present in the diluted sample is 8 ml. So this is 100 by 8. Get me the value of dilution ratio. Get me the value of dilution ratio. It is 12.5. Correct. Correct, Hitesh. It is 12.5, right? So, this is 12.5 is the dilution ratio. You have the initial DO. You have the final DO. You have the dilution ratio. You can simply calculate the BOD5. So, this BOD5, this BOD5, this BOD5 is equals to DO initial minus DO final minus DO final multiplied by the dilution ratio multiplied by the dilution ratio so this do initial this do initial is given to us as 4.25 milligram per liter so this is 4.25 milligram per liter minus do final so do final is given as 6 point do final is given as 0 so do final is given as 0 <coughs> Okay, so DO final is given as 1.2 milligram per liter. So this DO final is given as 1.2 milligram per liter multiplied by the dilution ratio of 12.5. So get me the value of DO5, BOD5, 38.125, 38.125, correct answer. So BOD5 is, BOD5 is 38.125. 125 milligram per liter. So this is 38.125 milligram per liter, right? 38.125 milligram per liter. Correct, Prashant, Hitesh, correct. Get me the quick answers. Okay. So 38.125 is the BOD5 using this test. Moving on with this. We have the next question in which we are given with the 12% dilution. We are given with the 12% dilution of the wastewater having initial DO of 6.23 milligram per liter and the BOD after 5 days is 0 milligram per liter. Get me the BOD5 for this. Get me the BOD5 for this. This question is for you people. Get me the BOD5 for this. Quickly calculate the dilution ratio and get me the value of BOD5 for this. Quickly get me the answers. Quickly get me the answers for this. Get me the answer of BOD5 for this question. Fifty-one point nine eight. Fifty-one point nine eight. Okay, okay. Fifty-one 
Ritesh is getting 51.91. My dear student, my dear student, please stop the calculation and listen to me very carefully. Whenever you have final BOD as 0 milligram per liter, right? In this case, BOD5 cannot be determined, right? BOD5 cannot be determined because when you have placed this diluted water sample in an incubator, the decomposition of the organic matter is happening, right? During these five days of decomposition, there may be a possibility that the entire dissolved oxygen which was there in the diluted water sample was used up before five days. And there if possibly some more amount of dissolved oxygen could have been there, then more decomposition may happen, right? So for this case, when your DO final is zero, in this case, you will report BOD5, you will report BOD5 as not determined, cannot be determined. You will report it as cannot be determined, cannot be determined, cannot be determined. So whenever your final DO is zero, in this case, BOD cannot be determined, right? Because there may be a possibility that this dissolved oxygen which was there in the diluted sample may be used up even before five days of incubation and if further dissolved oxygen could have been there, more decomposition will happen, right? So whenever your final DO is zero, in that case, your BOD cannot be determined. You need to increase the dilution of your wastewater. You need to increase the dilution of your wastewater and again repeat the test for BOD. For example, if there is a dilution of 12%, you have to increase it to 14-15% so that sufficient amount of dissolved oxygen should be there so that this decomposition will happen for all the 5 days. Unlike this case where decomposition may have stopped before 5 days, right? So whenever DO final is 0, in that case, BOD is not determined. Next question. So, the following observations were made on a 4% dilution of wastewater. DO of aerated water used for dilution is 5 mg per liter. DO of original sample is 0.8 mg per liter. Now, here you are given with the dissolved oxygen of the sewage and the aerated water, right? You are given with the dissolved oxygen of the sewage and the aerated water. Here you are given with the dissolved oxygen of the aerated water and the sewage. So if this is my, if this is my sewage sample, if this is my sewage sample, if this is my sewage sample, the DO of the sewage sample, the DO of the sewage sample is given as 0 0.8, 0 0.8 milligram per liter, right? And the aerated water DO is given as 5 milligram per liter. So if this is my aerated water, this is my aerated water, the DO is given as 5 milligram per liter. Both of these will mix to form the diluted sample. Both of these mix to form the diluted sample. Now this initial DO of this diluted sample is not given to you directly. So using these two relations, we can calculate the initial DO. Again, we are given with the 4% dilution of the wastewater. It means 4 ml of our sewage is mixed with 96 ml of our aerated water to get 100 ml of our diluted sample, right? So, using this volume, we take the weighted average with respect to the volume to calculate the DO initial of this diluted sample. So, this DO initial of the diluted sample will be equal to the weighted average of this dissolved oxygen with respect to the volume. That is 0 0.8 into 4. Let me write in the other page. So, this is 0 0.8 into 4. So, DO initial, DO initial is 0 0.8 into 4 plus 0 0.8 into 4 
प्लस फाइव इंटू नाइंटी सिक्स प्लस फाइव इंटू नाइंटी सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाय दी फोर प्लस नाइंटी सिक्स राइट सो दिस इज द वेटेड एवरेज ऑफ डिजॉल्व ऑक्सीजन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द वॉल्यूम राइट जस्ट गेट मी द क्विक आंसर फॉर दिस डीओ इनिशियल डीओ इनिशियल इज फोर पॉइंट एट थ्री टू ओके लेट मी चेक इट इज फोर पॉइंट एट थ्री टू करेक्ट सो डीओ इनिशियल इज फोर पॉइंट एट थ्री टू सो डीओ इनिशियल इज फोर पॉइंट एट थ्री टू मिलीग्राम पर लीटर क्विकली गेट मी द डायल्यूशन रेशियो फॉर द डायल्यूटेड सैंपल क्विकली गेट मी द डायल्यूशन रेशियो फॉर द डायल्यूटेड सैंपल सो डायल्यूशन रेशियो डायल्यूशन रेशियो डायल्यूशन रेशियो ऑफ द डायल्यूटेड सैंपल इज द टोटल वॉल्यूम ऑफ द डायल्यूटेड सैंपल दैट इज हंड्रेड एम एल डिवाइडेड बाय द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द सीवेज सैंपल प्रेजेंट इन द डायल्यूटेड सैंपल सो दिस इज फोर सो इट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव डायल्यूशन रेशियो इज ट्वेंटी फाइव यू आर ऑल्सो गिवेन विद द फाइनल डीओ ऑफ द डायल्यूटेड सैंपल राइट सो द फाइनल डीओ आफ्टर फाइव डेज ऑफ इंक्यूबेशन इट इज गिवेन एज वन पॉइंट टू मिलीग्राम पर लीटर सो फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग बीओडी फाइव सो बीओडी फाइव इज इक्वल्स टू डीओ इनिशियल माइनस डीओ फाइनल इन टू डायल्यूशन रेशो इन टू डायल्यूशन रेशो इन टू डायल्यूशन रेशो सो डीओ इनिशियल वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड एज फोर पॉइंट एट थ्री टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाय डीओ फाइनल दैट इज वन पॉइंट टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द डायल्यूशन रेशो दैट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव गेट मी द क्विक वैल्यू ऑफ बीओडी फाइव बीओडी फाइव इज नाइनटी पॉइंट एट हितेश इज सेइंग नाइनटी पॉइंट एट हितेश इज सेइंग नाइनटी पॉइंट एट ओके सो बीओडी फाइव इज नाइनटी पॉइंट एट सो बीओडी फाइव बीओडी फाइव बीओडी फाइव इज नाइनटी पॉइंट एट मिलीग्राम पर लीटर सो दिस इज आर बीओडी फाइव लेट मी जस्ट चेक व्हाट इज आस्ड इन द क्वेश्चन so question says that the ultimate bod of the waste water sample taking kd as 0.1 per day so here we have only calculated the bod 5 we need to calculate the ultimate bod of the medium so ultimate bod of this water sample is ultimate bod of this water sample is so this ultimate bod can be calculated from this expression so bod 5 is equals to bod ultimate into 1 minus we are given with k or kd here kd is given whenever kd is there you have to use to the base 10 right you have to take the base 10 so this is 10 raised to the power minus kd into t so using this expression we can calculate the ultimate bod so bod 5 is given as 90.8 this is 90.8 bod ultimate we need to calculate bod ultimate we need to calculate 1 minus 10 is to power minus kd the value of kd is given as 0.1 per day bod <coughs> kd is given as 0.1 per day and type is 5 days because bod 5 we have considered calculate the value of bod ultimate get me the value of bod ultimate get me the value of bod ultimate Get me the value of BOD ultimate quickly. Get me the value of BOD ultimate <coughs> quickly. Get me the value of BOD ultimate. One thirty two point seven nine. Correct. Correct. Prashant. It is one thirty two point eight. Let me just round it off. One thirty two point eight milligram per liter. So this is my final answer of calculating the ultimate BOD. my dear students whenever there are two layers in the question right whenever there are two layers in the question the question will surely be of two marks whenever two expressions are used in the question the question can surely be of two marks whenever two types of calculation are there in the question the question can surely be of two marks right so please keep all these things in mind if a question is of one mark then only it can be solved in just a span of This question is following observations are made on a four percent dilution of a waste water. Okay, I guess this is the same question. Please calculate this. The BOD five of a waste water has been measured as seven hundred milligram per liter. So BOD five of a waste water 
has been measured as 700 mg per liter. If KD is 0.1 per day to the base 10, what is the percentage of BOD ultimate would remain oxidized after 30 days? Right. So, what you are asked is you need to calculate the percentage of BOD remaining, BOD remaining to the ultimate BOD to the ultimate BOD in 200 in 200 this expression you need to calculate right so this BOD remaining this BOD remaining can be written as BOD ultimate BOD ultimate into 1 minus sorry BOD ultimate so here KD is given so BOD ultimate into 10 raised to power minus KD into T KD into T divided by BOD ultimate divided by BOD ultimate into 100. So, this BOD ultimate cancels out from the numerator and denominator. So, you have to just calculate the value of 10 raised to power minus KD, 10 raised to power minus KD that is 0 0.1 into what the number of days? 30, right. So, 10 raised to power minus 0 0.1 into 30. Get me the answer for this. Get me the quick answer for this. I will be just back in a while. Get me the quick answer for this. Correct, 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 correct. It is 0.1 percent. It is 0.1 percent is the correct answer, right? So, this question, you have to take care that which type of BOD is asked. In the majority of the question, right? If simply BOD is written, then in that case, BOD consumed is taken care. BOD consumed is asked. But, if BOD remaining has to be calculated in the question, it will be specifically mentioned that calculate the BOD remaining or the BOD which is left out. So, anywhere you calculate BOD, it will be always BOD consumed. But if the questioner is asking, if the questioner wants you to calculate the BOD which is uh, remaining, then it will be mentioned in the question specifically, right? So, correct. Moving on with this. We have a next question which says that a wastewater stream has a flow of 3 meter cube per second and the ultimate BOD of 80 milligram per liter is joining a small river flow of 11 meter cube per second having ultimate BOD of 4 milligram per liter. Both the water streams get mixed instantaneously. Cross sectional area of the river is 60 meter square. Assume the value of K as 0.25 per day. The BOD in milligram per liter of the river water 25 kilometers downstream from the point of mixing is. Let me just explain this question clearly to you. It is saying that if this is a river flowing like this, if this is a river flowing like this, if this is a river flowing like this, 
then to this river stream a sewage stream is getting mixed like this this is the sewage stream this is the sewage stream and this is the river stream qr right in this river stream a sewage stream is mixing and from this point of mixing from this point of mixing 25 kilometers downstream 25 kilometers downstream 25 kilometers downstream this is 25 kilometers downstream 25 kilometers downstream what is the bod what is the bod of the water what is the bod of the water right this bod will this bod will be the bod consumed not the bod remaining that after water 25 kilometers what will be the bod of this water now the expression for bod the expression for bod at any time t is equals to bod ultimate is equals to bod ultimate into 1 minus let me use which k is given so k is given to the base e so i'll use base e right so bod at any time t is equals to bod ultimate into 10 raised to power minus k into e raised to power minus into e raised to power minus k into t so this is the expression for calculating the bod after any time t right this time t if i know this bod ultimate if i know this bod ultimate and if i know this time t i can calculate the bod after time t right for calculating this time t for calculating this time t this time t is nothing but the time taken by the river from traveling from this point traveling from this point and reaching 25 kilometers downstream so this time t this time t can be calculated if i know if i know the velocity of flow because 25 kilometers divided by the velocity of flow will give me the time in which the water or the mix is reaching from this point till this point okay so is this clear to you is this clear to you right in order to get this velocity of flow this velocity of flow one data is given and the according to the data we have discharge of mix is equals to area of flow multiplied by the velocity of flow this discharge this discharge of mix is the discharge of the sewage stream plus discharge of the river stream so this qr plus qs is equals to area of flow area of flow or area of the river is given to us as 60 meter square this is the area which is given to us as 60 meter square so 60 meter square area is given to us so this is 60 into velocity of flow just substitute the value of qr and qs and get me the value of velocity of flow get me the value of velocity of flow so qr is qr is 11 meter cube per second this is my qr velocity of river stream and this is my qs velocity of uh, sorry discharge of sewage stream so 3 plus 11 so this is 3 plus 11 is equals to 60 into vf so this is meter square this discharge is in meter cube per second this discharge is in meter cube per second so the velocity of flow that you will get will be in meter per second get me the velocity of flow so get me the velocity of flow quickly get me the velocity of flow <clears throat> 0 0.233 okay 0 0.2 3 3 meter per second so this is 0 0.2 0 0.233 meter per second so you have the velocity of flow just calculate the time just calculate the time and calculate the time in days right calculate the time in days so distance upon speed so distance is 25 kilometers that is 25,000 divided by speed that is 0 0.233 multiplied by 24 into 3600 i am just converting this time in days right i am just converting this time in days get me the time in days 
गेट मी द टाइम इन डेज गेट मी द टाइम इन डेज गेट मी द टाइम इन डेज सो दिस टाइम इन डेज इज वन पॉइंट टू फाइव एट डेज सो दिस टी इज वन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट टू फाइव एट डेज so i have the time in days in which this water of the mix will going to reach from this point till this point which is 25 kilometers downstream correct 1.24 1.24 i'm getting 1.258 something okay so that is also considered no problem chalo so this is 1.24 or 1.25 whatever okay now understand this this is one sewage stream this is one sewage stream this is one sewage stream ultimate bod of the sewage stream is given to us bod ultimate of the sewage stream is given to us this sewage stream is getting mixed with a river stream and both of these stream are moving in a form of mix so this is my river stream this is my river stream qr and the bod of my river stream bod ultimate of my river stream is also given to me right so after this point they are moving in a form of mix so this is the discharge of mix that we have already calculated which is qs which is qs plus qr right in order to calculate the ultimate bod of the mix again we have to take the weighted average of this ultimate bod with respect to the discharge so bod ultimate so bod ultimate of the mix bod ultimate of the mix is equals to bod of bod ultimate of river multiplied by bod ultimate of river bod ultimate of river multiplied by discharge of river plus bod ultimate of plus bod ultimate of bod ultimate of sewage stream multiplied by discharge of sewage stream divided by the total discharge that is qr plus qs when we use this kind of expression that is, this is the weighted expression this is the weighted expression with respect to the discharge we have taken the weighted average of the bod with respect to the discharge right we have taken the weighted average of the bod with respect to the discharge just get me the bod bod of the mix bod ultimate of the mix get me the bod ultimate of the mix so bod ultimate bod ultimate of the mix is equals to bod of the river bod of the river is bod of the river is 80 mg no 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 bod of the river is 4 mg per liter this is bod of the river 4 mg per liter and the discharge of the river is 11 so 4 into 11 this is bod of the river 4 into discharge of river 11 plus bod of the sewage stream this is bod of the sewage stream it is 80 mg per liter and the discharge is 3 meter cube per second so 80 into 3 divided by the total discharge that is 11 plus 3 get me the bod ultimate of the mix it is 20.285 correct it is 20 point it is 20.285 it is 20.285 get me the correct value just check it once just check it once it is 4 into 11 plus 18 into 3 divided by 11 plus 3 just check it once everybody is getting 20.85 285 just check it once the value of ultimate bod you have to also divide it by 11 plus 3 14 so 4 into 11 44 plus 240 so 44 plus 240 divided by 14 so it is 20.285 so this is 20.285 
मिलीग्राम पर लीटर ओके दिस इज करेक्ट ट्वेंटी पॉइंट टू एट फाइव मिलीग्राम पर लीटर सो टाइम वी हैव सो बीओडी बीओडी एट टाइम बीओडी एट टाइम वन पॉइंट वन टू फाइव एट और BOD at 1.24 that you people are getting. So BOD at 1.24 is equals to BOD ultimate that is 2.20.285 into 1 minus what is the value of K? So the value of K is to the base E. So this is E raised to the power minus 0.23 I guess. It is 0 0.25, 0 0.25, it is 0 0.25 multiplied by time that is 1.24. Get me the final answer of BOD, ultimate, eh, sorry, BOD of 1.1 point, 1 point, get me the value of BOD 1.24. Yes, yes, Josh is high again, Josh is high. Do me the calculation and again you will get it is 5.407. 5.407 okay 5.5.407 5 milligram per liter it is 5.407 milligram per liter so this is the BOD of the mix when the water has traveled when the water has traveled 25 kilometers downstream right when the sewage is getting mixed and the water has traveled 25 kilometers downstream then add 25 kilometers downstream the BOD of the mix that you will get is 5.407. So, hope this question is also clear to you. This question is also clear to you. Okay, moving on. <coughs> Next is, once the wastewater is generated in any community, this wastewater is collected and supplied to the water distribution plant using different types of sievers. Now, under the sievers, the flow that happen, happens under the action of gravity. The flow that is happening inside the sievers are the open channel flow, right? So, we do not introduce any pumps in order to transfer sewage from one point to the another for any community. This flow that happens in a sever is the open channel flow and it happens under the action of gravity. These sievers are designed to carry maximum discharge. These sievers are designed to carry maximum discharge. Now, my dear student, understand this very well. When we talk about sewage, we are talking about huge amount of suspended particles, right? So, during the transportation of the sewage or wastewater from one point to the another, the settling of these solids will also going to happen, correctly. So, when we design the sewer, we design it for maximum to carry maximum early discharge. But we check this sewer corresponding to the development of self-cleansing velocity during minimum early discharge. My dear student, if I talk about self-cleansing velocity, let me draw a sever in front of you. If this is a sever and in this sever, these particles are there, right? These particles are there. These particles are there. These particles will undergo settlement while transportation. These particles will undergo settlement while transportation, right? If this is the depth of water, if this is the depth of water, this is the depth of, depth of, depth of flow, this is the depth of flow during maximum hourly discharge, during maximum, during maximum hourly discharge, during maximum hourly discharge, if this is the depth of flow, so during maximum hourly discharge, sufficient amount of turbulence is present in order to carry these suspended solids along with them and these suspended solids do not settle when the depth of flow is corresponding to the maximum early discharge for which this sewage or sievers are designed, right? But during the minimum early discharge, but during the minimum early discharge, but during the minimum early discharge, Sufficient amount of energy should be available with this water so that no sedimentation of these particles will happen, right? In order to ensure that no sedimentation of the particles should happen, we check that the self-cleansing velocity has developed or not in the sewer corresponding to this, corresponding to this depth of flow, which is corresponding to minimum hourly discharge which is corresponding to this minimum hourly discharge, minimum hourly discharge. 
सो इफ करस्पॉन्डिंग टू मिनिमम अर्ली डिस्चार्ज इस सेल्फ क्लींजिंग बिलोसिटी इज डेवलप्ड देन दिस सेल्फ क्लींजिंग बिलोसिटी एंश्योर दैट नो पार्टिकल विल गोइंग टू सेटल इवन ड्यूरिंग वेन द फ्लो इज एट इट्स मिनिमम राइट सो इवन ड्यूरिंग मिनिमम अर्ली फ्लो नो पार्टिकल्स विल गोइंग टू सेटल इफ द सेल्फ क्लींजिंग बिलोसिटी हैज डेवलप्ड इन दिस सीवर राइट इज दिस ओके इज दिस क्लियर इज दिस क्लियर सो दी सीवर्स आर डिजाइंड दी सीवर्स आर डिजाइंड to carry maximum early discharge but they are checked for the development of self cleansing velocity but they are checked for the development of self cleansing velocity during minimum early discharge the expression for self cleansing velocity is under root 8k by f into g minus 1 into gd where k is the constant which depends upon the type of organic matter present in the system f is the friction factor g is the specific gravity a small g is the acceleration due to gravity and d is the size of the particle the so self cleansing velocity can be calculated using this expression now next talking about the hydraulic properties of flow if we consider two sievers two identical sievers in which in one of the sievers the depth of flow is complete through the entire diameter d if the water is if the waste water let me consider these two sievers these are two identical sievers for the first siever if the depth of flow is complete through this entire depth d through this entire depth d through this entire depth d through this entire depth capital d so capital d is the diameter of the siever through this entire depth d if the water is flowing and in the next siever if the depth of if the depth of flow is less is less it is less so depth of flow for the second siever is small d it is small d it is small d and alpha is the central angle if the central angle which is suspended which is suspended which is suspended which is suspended by the surface of the flowing water which is suspended by the surface of the flowing water at the center of the siever if alpha is the central angle suspended by the surface of the flowing water at the center of the siever small d is the depth of flow when the waste water is flowing not at its full depth then in this case we do a comparative study for both these sievers and we get the hydraulic properties of the flow in the sever right so depth of flow small d by capital d we get as 1 minus cos alpha by 2 divided by 2 next is the perimeter of flow that we get is small p by capital p is equals to alpha by 360 next is the area of flow that is small a by capital a is equals to alpha by 360 minus sin alpha by 2 pi when i talk about the depth of flow i am talking about this diameter small d to capital d i am talking about this depth small d to capital d the ratio of small d to capital d is 1 minus cos alpha by 2 divided by 2 when i talk about the perimeter of flow i am talking about this entire parameter capital p for this entire depth d and i am talking about this parameter which is only which is only which is only which is only the weighted parameter this is my weighted parameter small p so weighted parameter small p to the weighted parameter capital p gives us the ratio of alpha by 360 when i talk about the area of flow this small a is this area which i have shaded when the depth of flow is small d and my capital a is the area of flow when the entire depth of capital d is used as the depth of flow right so this small a by capital a is equals to alpha by 360 minus sin alpha by 2 pi next is my hydraulic mean depth so this hydraulic mean depth is this hydraulic mean depth is this hydraulic mean depth hydraulic mean depth hydraulic hydraulic mean depth hydraulic mean depth is nothing but hydraulic mean depth is nothing but the wetted area the wetted the wetted area wetted area divided by the wetted perimeter divided by the wetted perimeter divided by the wetted perimeter so hydraulic mean depth is the wetted area divided by the wetted perimeter that is either can be written as small a by small p or or it can be written as capital a by capital p if the depth of flow is small d if the depth of flow is small d if the depth of flow is small d then the hydraulic mean depth will be small a by capital a if my depth of flow is capital d 
द हाइड्रोलिक मीन डेप्थ यूज विल बी द हाइड्रोलिक मीन डेप्थ विल यूज विल बी कैपिटल ए बाय कैपिटल पी ओके सो जस्ट कंसिडरिंग दीज टू पॉइंट वी हैव डिराइव द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर हाइड्रोलिक मीन डेप्थ दैट इज स्मॉल आर बाय कैपिटल आर is equals to alpha by 360 minus sin alpha by 2 pi divided by alpha by 360 as you can see here that i have simply divided this area expression with the perimeter expression that is alpha by 360 to get the hydraulic mean depth now this velocity of flow expression small v by capital p is alpha by 360 minus sin alpha by 2 pi upon alpha by 360 raised to the power 2 by 3 this expression we get using manning equation right it's a complete derivation it's a huge time taking process so just remember the end last result of the derivation that we get of these hydraulic properties of flow in the sievers right moving on with this <coughs> so sievers having same degree of self cleansing right if we talk about the sievers having same degree of self cleansing we are talking about sievers which offer same resistive force which offers same resistive force to the settling particles right let us consider two sievers like this let us consider two sievers like this these are two different sievers with same degree of self cleansing with same with same degree of with same degree of self cleansing with same degree of self cleansing with same degree of self cleansing right we have two different sievers in which same degree of self cleansing is there in first of the sievers in first siever the depth of flow is the entire depth right in the first siever the depth of flow is the entire depth for the second siever the depth of flow is partial the depth of flow is partial we have the partial depth of flow like this right so when we talk about same degree of self cleansing we are talking about the resistant force or the friction force offered by the flow of fluid against the settling of these particles right we are talking about the resistive force offered by these offered by this flowing waste water against the settling of these particle if this waste water applies same kind of resistive force same kind of shear stresses are there for both the sievers then we can say that the both the sievers have same degree of self cleansing when two sievers have same degree of self cleansing then in that case the velocity can be calculated as small v by capital v is equals to small r by capital r raised to the power 1 by 6 as i have already told you same degree of self cleansing means same resistive force same resistance force are applied against the settling of the particles during movement of the waste water from one end to the other end right so this is we mean by same degree of self cleansing next we have a question which says that a sever of 400 mm diameter and slope of 1 in 100 running half full has a flow velocity of 1.64 meter per second what velocity of flow should be obtained if the flow is made 1 in 200 right first understand this when we talk about the velocity of flow velocity of flow velocity of flow so velocity of flow is always calculated using manning's expression it is always calculated or the average velocity of flow is always calculated as uh, using manning's expression which is 1 upon n into r raised to the power 2 by 3 into r raised to the power 2 by 3 into r raised to the power 2 by 3 into r raised to the power 2 by 3 multiplied by s raised to the power 1 by 2 multiplied by s raised to the power 1 by 2 where n is the manning's constant which depends upon the type of sever material right the kind of roughness present in the sever material depending on that this n is decided r is the hydraulic mean depth that we have already discussed just now and s is the hydraulic gradient or the slope of the sever s is the hydraulic gradient or slope of the sever for this question we are given with we are given with a 400 mm diameter sever we have a 400 mm diameter sever so diameter of the sever is given as capital d is given as 400 mm 400 mm is the diameter of the sever the slope is 1 in 800 slope is 1 in 800 it is running half full right it is running half full so depth of flow so the depth of flow depth of flow this is my depth of flow 
it is running half full. So, this depth of flow, this is this depth of flow, this is depth of flow small d. So, this depth of flow is this small d is capital D by 2 because it is running half full, right. Further, the velocity of flow is 1.64 meter per second. So, V is given as V is given as 1.64 meter per second, right. What is asked in the question? You need to calculate the velocity of flow that will be obtained if the slope is changed to 1 in 200, right. So, we have this Menning's expression. So, we have this V1 corresponding to S1 slope. We have this V1 corresponding to S1 slope. When the slope is S2, when the slope is S2, that is 1 in 200, 1 in 200, we need to calculate the value of V2, right? Any change in depth of flow is happening? Any change in depth of flow is happening? Any change of depth of flow is happening? Okay. I was saying 2 by 3 and I am writing 3 by 2, okay. R raised to the power 2 by 3 and S raised to the power 1 by 2. No, it is R raised to the power 3 by 2 only. It is R raised to the power 3 by 2 into S raised to the power R raised to the power 2 by 3. R raised to the power 2 by 3 into S raised to the power 1 by 2. Into S raised to the power 1 by 2. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So, if the slope is 1 by 200, then you need to calculate this V2, right? No change in depth of flow is happening. Hence, your hydraulic mean depth will also not going to change. Your value of R will also not going to change. It will remain same. Your material of the sewer is not changing. Hence, your N value will also remain same. Your N value will also remain same because the material of the sewer is not changing at all. So, we can write it as V1, V1 is equals to 1 upon N into R raised to the power 2 by 3 into S raised to the power 1 by 2 into S1 raised to the power 1 by 2, right? Similarly, we can write it as V2, V2 is equals to 1 upon N into R raised to the power 2 by 3 into S2 raised to the power 1 by 2 into S2 raised to the power 1 by 2. So, this 1 by N, 1 by N cancels out this R and R cancels out, right? So, we have the expression for V1 by V2, V1 by V2 is equals to S1 by S2 raised to the power 1 by 2. Just substitute the value of S1 and S2 and V1 and get me the value of V2 and get me the value of V2, quickly get me the value of V2. <coughs> so, this V1 is, this V1 is 1.64, this V1 is 1.64 divided by V2, divided by V2, S1 is 1 in 800, S1 is 1 in 800 and S2 is 1 in 200, 1 in 200 raised to the power 1 by 2, right. So, this is 1 by 4, 1 by 4 is 2 root, so 2 into 1.64. So, V2 is, V2 is 2 into 1.64. Just get me the value of this V2. V2 is 3.28 meter per second. So, V2 is 3.28 meter per second. V2 is 3.28 meter per second. Nice, Hitesh. Good, good. Prashant, good. 3.28 meter per second, right? Okay. Moving on, this is the next question which says, in a circular sewer of diameter D, if the depth of flow is D by 4, then the weighted parameter will be. In the question, it is given that you have a circular sewer, you have a circular sewer, or this circular sewer, the depth of flow is D by 4. This is my depth of flow, and this depth of flow, small d, this depth of flow, this depth of flow, this depth of flow, this depth of flow, small d, this depth of flow, small d is d by 4. You need to calculate the wetted perimeter. You need to calculate this wetted perimeter. You need to calculate this wetted perimeter. You need to calculate this wetted perimeter in terms of the diameter, right? So, this small d by capital D, small d, 
this small d by capital D comes out to be 1 by 4 and we have seen the ratio of depth of flow small d by capital D is equals to 1 minus cos alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2 divided by 2. From here you can get the value of cos alpha, get me the value of alpha sorry, get me the value of alpha. So this is this uh, 1 times 2 times this is 1 by 2 1 minus so this is cos alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2 comes out to be 1 by 2. So from here my alpha is 120 degrees, my alpha is 120 degrees right because cos 60 is 1 by 2. So alpha by 2 is 60 so alpha is 120 degrees right. So if you have the value of alpha, if you have the value of alpha you can calculate the parameter small p by capital P small p by capital P is equals to alpha by 360 is equals to alpha by 360. The value of a small p you need to calculate the value of capital P into alpha by 360. So capital P is pi d, it is pi d multiplied by alpha which is 120 divided by 360 degree, 120 degree divided by 360 degree. So from here you have the value of weighted parameter as pi d by 3. Again a very simple question. But this question I have introduced just to keep you posted how important are the hydraulic properties of water, right? So hydraulic properties of flow for sievers are important because many questions can be framed if we know all these properties and we can very easily solve all these questions. Is this okay? Is this clear to you? Okay. Chalo, moving on. Moving on. Next is a sever has a diameter of 400 mm and a slope of 1 in 600, right? Let me write it first. Let me write, right? So, diameter of the sever, capital D, is 400 mm. It is 400 mm. The slope is 1 in 600. So, S is 1 in 600, right? While running full, the depth of flow, while running full, please keep in mind, while running full, while running full, has a mean velocity of 0 0.9 meter per second. So, V1 is 0 0.9 meter per second and it is running full. It is running, it is running, it is running full. It is running full. So, tell me if a sever is running full, if a sever is running full, if a sever is running full, what is its hydraulic mean depth? Its hydraulic mean depth is capital A by capital P. Capital A is pi d square by 4, pi d square by 4 divided by parameter that is pi d. So this pi and pi cancels out, d and 1 d cancels out, you will going to have the expression for hydraulic mean depth as d by 4. So d by 4 will be your hydraulic mean depth, right? Now the question further says that if both if both diameter and slope are doubled, right? If both diameter and slope are doubled. So if I talk about the new sever, the diameter is also doubled and slope, it is also doubled. It is also doubled. For this case, you need to calculate what will be the changed, what will be the change mean velocity when running half full, when running half full means for these two changes, when the slope and diameter of the sever are doubled, what will be the velocity of flow V dash? What will be the velocity of flow V dash when this sever, this increased size sever is running half full? When this increased size sever is running half full. Now, first of all, tell me, for this sever of larger size and larger slope, what will be its hydraulic mean depth? So R dash, R dash hydraulic mean depth is equals to A dash wetted area divided by the wetted parameter. I'll write it as I'll write it small because the flow sever is running partially full. So A dash by P dash. A dash is nothing but the half of the entire area. So half of the entire area will be pi d square by 8. So, this will be 
pi d square by 8. Similarly, this p dash will be half of the entire parameter. So, half of the entire parameter will be pi d by 2. Okay. Get me the expression for r dash. Get me r dash quickly. Get me r dash. So, sorry. This is d dash square. This is d dash pi d dash. So, this is pi d dash. This pi and pi cancels out. This 2, this is 4 times and this d and 1d cancels out, right? So, you have d dash by 4. Now, this d dash is twice of d. This d dash is twice of d by 4. So, from here, I can calculate r dash as r dash is equals to d by 2. This r dash is d by 2. This r dash is d by 2, right? This r dash is d by 2. Just consider both the expression for velocity. So, V have V is equals to 1 by N R raised to the power 2 by 3 into S raised to the power 1 by 2. And we have the expression for velocity in which the diameter is increased. So, R dash raised to the power 2 by 3 multiplied by S dash raised to the power 1 by 2, right? So, this is the expression. Since the material is not changing, therefore, these Manning's constant are cancelled. This r, this small r, this small r is nothing but d by 4. This small r is d by 4. This small r is d by 4. Substitute the value. So, you have v by v dash is equals to r is d by 4. This is d by 4 raised to power 2 by 3 into s raised to power 1 by 2. This r dash, this r dash we have just now calculated, this is d by 4, this is d by 4, this r dash we have just now calculated and this r dash is d by 2, this r dash is d by 2. So, this is d by 2 raised to the power 2 by 3 multiplied by s that is 2s, slope s dash which is 2s, right. So, just take these two into consideration, you will going to have d by 4 by d by 2. So, this will be 1 by, so this is d by 4 by d by 2 raised to the power 2 by 3 multiplied by this s and s cancels out. So, you have, so this 2s raised to the power 1 by 2. So, you have 1 by 2 raised to the power 1 by 2, right, like this. So, this D and D cancels out. You have this 1 and 2 like this. So, this is also 1 by 2. So, you have V by V dash V by V dash is equals to 1 by 2 raised to the power 2 by 3 into 1 by 2 1 by 2 raised to the power 1 by 2. When the bases are same, powers are added. So, add all these two powers. So, you will going to have 1 by 2 raised to the power 2 by 3 plus 1 by 2. So, this is 4 plus 3, 7 by 6. So, V dash is equals to V dash is equals to V into 1 by 2 raised to the power 7 by 6. Just substitute the value of V and get me the value of V dash. Substitute the value of V and get me the value of V dash. It is 3.28. 3.28. Okay. So, this V dash is 3.28. It is 3.28 meter per second. Correct. So, this V dash is 3.28 meter per second. Correct. Correct. Correct, Prashant. Hitesh, correct. Okay. Chal. Shall we move on? Shall we move on with this? Shall we move on with this? Shall we move on with this? Okay. So, when we talk about, when we talk about the treatment of wastewater, the entire treatment of wastewater is classified as pre-treatment, then primary treatment then secondary treatment and then sludge digestion, right? When we talk about pretreatment, we are talking about removal of 
इनऑर्गेनिक सस्पेंडेड सॉलिड राइट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रिमूवल ऑफ इनऑर्गेनिक सस्पेंडेड सॉलिड इट वॉज फॉर लास्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज थ्री पॉइंट टू एट राइट थ्री पॉइंट टू एट इज करेक्ट थ्री पॉइंट टू एट इज करेक्ट ओके थ्री पॉइंट टू एट नो 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 इट इज टू पॉइंट जीरो टू इट इज टू पॉइंट दिस इज टू पॉइंट जीरो टू गेट मी द आंसर इट इज टू पॉइंट जीरो टू सो दिस वी डैश इज टू पॉइंट जीरो टू टू पॉइंट जीरो टू मीटर पर सेकेंड दिस इज टू पॉइंट जीरो टू मीटर पर सेकेंड टू पॉइंट टू फोर फोर ओके टू पॉइंट टू फोर फोर ओके जस्ट क्रॉस चेक इट वंस राइट जस्ट क्रॉस चेक इट वंस इफ यू हैव अ कैलकुलेशन मिस्टेक यू कैन करेक्ट इट अकॉर्डिंगली वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दी वेस्ट वॉटर राइट so when we talk about the waste water and the treatment of waste water this entire treatment this entire treatment is divided into pre treatment where we talk about the removal of inorganic suspended particles second is the primary treatment where we talk about the removal of dissolved sorry removal of organic suspended particles so suspended organic particles are removed in the primary treatment in the secondary treatment we talk about the removal of dissolved or finely suspended organic particles right so this entire treatment of our waste water is focused on removing the inorganic particles in the pre treatment and then removing the organic particles either present in the dissolved form or in the suspended form in the subsequent treatment in the last stage which is sludge digestion we collect all this sludge which is produced after pre treatment primary treatment and secondary treatment and we process this sludge in order to dewater it in order to reduce its volume in order to further decompose it so that this sludge may stabilize and we can decompose this sludge oh sorry we can just uh, dispose of this sludge in the various sites available right when we talk about pre treatment pre treatment consists of screenings where core suspended solids are removed then we have a grid chamber and this grid chamber is used to remove the inorganic suspended particles next we have the skimming tank which removes oil and grease present in water right in india this skimming tank is not used for removing oil and grease only we go for screening and grit chamber we use different chemical coagulation for removing oil and grease from the system second is the primary treatment my dear student primary treatment is basically used to remove the suspended organic solids which are present no decomposition will happen we have a primary sedimentation tank in which if water flows these suspended particles are removed right next is the secondary treatment in the secondary treatment or biological treatment we add microorganisms or these microorganisms carry out the decomposition of the dissolved organic matter or the suspended or the fine suspended organic matter present in the system correct now talking about sedimentation there are different types of settling there are there first one is the type one settling or the discrete particle settling where the particle settles as an individual there is no influence of the other particle over the settling of this particle this type of settling is known as type one or discrete settling which is either observed from plain sedimentation tank or grit chamber next one is the type two settling or flocculent settling this type of settling is observed when during settling the size of the particle increases because of the agglomeration of the other particles when the other particles comes in contact to each other the size of the particle increases and they settle as a single unit this type of settling is known as the type 2 settling or the flocculent settling this type of settling is observed in the primary sedimentation tank after coagulation and flocculation and also in clary flocculators now clary flocculators is a single unit where coagulation flocculation and sedimentation all the three units or the all the three treatments will going to happen the next one is type 3 or zone settling in this type 3 or zone settling the velocity the velocity the velocity of two particles interfere with each other 
or the zone of turbulence of the two particles interfere with each other the zone of turbulence of the two particles interfere with each other this type of settling is basically observed in the secondary sedimentation tank after activated sludge process the fourth type of settling is known as the compression settling where the concentration of the suspended particles is huge and due to this huge concentration these suspended particles just rest over the lower layer and this lower layer of the suspended particles provide a support to the layer of the particles present above it and the kind of squeezing happens between these two layers and the water which is present inside these two layers or present in the voids this water squeezes out and this settles as a single unit this type of settling is known as the compression settling or the type 4 settling this type of settling is observed in the secondary sedimentation tank of the trickling filters moving on with this then we have the biological treatment units in which we have trickling filter these trickling filters are of two types standard rate trickling filter and the high rate trickling filter the standard rate trickling filter efficiency can be calculated as 100 upon 1 plus 0.0044 under root u where u is the organic loading rate u is the organic loading rate that is the amount of organic matter provided per meter square per day over the trickling filter in 1 meter square in 1 meter square area of a trickling filter how much organic matter you are providing in a day is known as the organic loading rate for two stage high rate trickling filter efficiency for the first stage can be calculated using this formula and for the second stage again it can be calculated using the subsequent formulas right so these are the formulas for calculating the efficiency for trickling filter next is we have a question that a standard rate trickling filter is designed for an organic loading rate you are directly given with the organic loading rate my dear student whenever we use the empirical formula please take care of the units in which the value has to be substituted for this standard rate trickling filter the value for calculating efficiency has to be substituted in kg per hectare meter per day right so in this question the your organic loading rate is given as 0.75 kg per meter square so u is given as 0.175 kg per meter cube per meter cube per day right but when we use the efficiency formula we need to substitute the value of organic loading rate in kg per hectare meter per day the next is if the influent bod of the sewage is 150 mg per liter what is the effluent bod of the sewage now this question may 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 this question may assume or presumed to be difficult but this is one of the simplest question if you know the formula for calculating the efficiency right so here you have a trickling filter like this this is my trickling filter in one end of the trickling filter the water is entering from one end of the trickling filter water is entering the waste water is entering and the bod of this waste water the bod of this waste water is the bod of this influent waste water is is 150 mg per liter it is 150 mg per liter and after getting treated this waste water is coming out from the trickling filter like this right so you are asked to calculate the bod of the effluent which is coming out this bod of the effluent you need to calculate if you know the efficiency of the trickling filter for removing for removing this bod you can very well calculate how much bod is coming out right so first of all you need to calculate the efficiency of this trickling filter so efficiency of this trickling filter can be calculated as efficiency of this trickling filter can be calculated as 100 upon 1 plus 0.0044 under root u so this is the efficiency of the standard rate trickling filter this u has to be kept in kg per hectare meter per day but here it is given in meter square so let me convert this u in meter kg per hectare meter per day so this is 0.175 0.175 kg i write it as meter square as i write meter cube as i write meter cube as meter square into meter into day right so this meter square can be written as 10 raised to power minus 4 hectares this meter square can be written as this meter square can be written as this meter square can be written as 10 raised to power minus 4 hectare meter right so this meter square i have write it as 10 raised to power minus 4 so this will be my this will be my expression for organic loading rate this is 0.175 into 10 raised to power 4 so this is kg per hectare meter 
per hectare meter per day. Now I have to substitute this value in this expression to get the efficiency of the removal of BOD from the standard rate tricking filter. So efficiency of BOD removal, efficiency of BOD removal for the standard rate trickling filter is 100 upon 1 plus 0 0.00044 under root 1750 which is the organic loading rate and get me the value of efficiency, get me the value of efficiency, get me the quick value of efficiency, get me the quick value of efficiency, get me the quick value of efficiency. Get me the quick value of efficiency. Get me the value of efficiency. Efficiency of trickling filter. Get me the quick value of efficiency. It might be coming as, it might be coming as 84.45. This might be coming as BOD 84.45%, right? So this is my efficiency of BOD removal of a trickling filter. If my influent BOD is, if my influent BOD is 150 milligram per liter, so my effluent BOD, that is BOD, which is coming out, this effluent BOD is 100 or 1 minus 0 0.8445 times of BOD, which is entering into the system, right? So 1 minus, 1 minus 0 0.8445 times of BOD influent that is 150. So this BOD which is coming out, get me the final answer. Okay, 82.988. Okay, Varsha, you can check on the calculation. No problem. No problem. No problem. Get me the BOD which is coming out from the system. Get me the value of BOD which is coming out from the system using 84.45 percentage of efficiency. So this you will get something around 23 point, 23 point, 3 to 5 milligram per liter. This will be the BOD of, this will be the BOD of the effluent which is coming out from the system, right? 23.325, correct, 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 what's a correct, okay, chalo. So this is how you can use the expression for efficiency for <coughs> this, right? Next is, in an activated sludge process, the influent discharge of the aeration tank Q0 is 47 MLD with inlet BOD concentration of 300 mg per liter. The BOD removal efficiency of the aeration tank is 96%. The volume of the aeration tank in is 380 m3 with MLSS concentration of 890 mg per liter. What is the specific food utilization rate for the above activated sludge process? Okay. So this question, I guess, came before a slide or something. Okay. So specific food utilization rate, right? So we are given with the activated sludge process. So we have Q naught. We have Q naught as forty-seven MLD. Forty-seven into ten is per six liters per day. We have Q naught. Then we have the inlet BOD concentration of 300 milligram per liter. So S0 is 300 milligram per liter. We have S0 as 300 milligram per liter. The BOD removal efficiency of the aeration tank is 96%. So efficiency of BOD removal, efficiency of BOD removal is 96%. Okay. So BOD that is coming out from the aeration tank S that is equal to 0. 0 0.04 times of 300. Get me this 0 0.04 times of 300. Get me this 0 0.04 times of 300. So this will be, I guess, 12 milligram per liter. This will be 12 milligram per liter. Further, the volume of the aeration tank is given as 380 meter cube. Volume of the aeration tank is given as 380 meter cube. Further, with MLSS concentration of 890 milligram per liter. So the concentration of X is given as 890, 890 milligram per liter. You need to calculate the specific food utilization rate of the activated sludge process. So specific food utilization rate U 
of the activated sludge process is equals to Q naught into S naught minus S into S naught minus S divided by V into X. So all the values are given, just substitute the values and get me the specific food utilization rate. So Q naught is 47 into 10 raised power 6. So this is U is 47 into 10 raised power 6 into 300 minus 12 divided by V is given as V is given as 380 and X is given as 890. So this is 380 multiplied by 890. Let me just check with the units. So meter cube, this is in milligram. This one is also milligram per liter. This is in meter cube per, this is in liter per day. So this Q naught is liter per day. In order to convert into meter cube per day, this has to be multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3, right? It has to be multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3. So this is 10 raised to the power minus 3. It is converted into meter cube per day. This is in milligram per liter. This is also in milligram per liter. So these two units cancels out. This is in meter cube, right? So specific food utilization rate you will get in days. Get me the final value of this U. Get me the final value of this U. So final value of this U will be 40.02. This U will be 40.02 days. This U will be 40.02 days. 40.02 days. Correct. Okay, correct. Now, moving on with the next question. This question is of solid waste management, right? My dear students, in solid waste management, there are two important areas from where question can be framed. First will be from the proximate analysis and second will be by the different methods of treatment. There can be n number of multiple select question that can be framed from different methods of treatment as the question which are asked in solid waste management are very new for gate examination. Recently in last two years, you will find a lot of questions that are asked in solid waste management. Now, one of the questions I have taken, for example, the moisture content of the solid waste management for a city was found to be 12%, right? So, when we talk about the moisture content, when we talk about the moisture content for a solid waste, so the moisture content of a solid waste, moisture content of a solid waste, moisture content of a solid waste is equal to, moisture content of a solid waste is equals to the weight of water. It is equal to the weight of water. It is equal to the weight of water divided by the weight of water divided by the total weight divided by the total weight divided by the total weight of the solid waste, right? Divided by the total weight of the solid waste. So, moisture content is given as weight of water divided by the total weight. In our soil mechanics, for calculating the moisture content of our solid waste, we consider only the weight of solids, not the total weight, right? So here the question is given the moisture content of a solid waste was collected from a city and found to be 12%. So initially the moisture content was 12%. Composting technique is used by a waste handling facility of a city to biodegrade solid waste. If required, the moisture content for composting technique is 48%. If required, the moisture content for composting technique is 48%. Calculate the amount of water to be added in 60 metric ton of solid waste. So the initial six, initial weight of the solid waste is 60 metric ton having moisture content of 12%. Initial weight of solid waste is 60 metric ton and the initial moisture content is 12%. The question is saying that calculate the amount of water to be added to increase the moisture content from 12% to 48%. Again, it is one of the very simple question, but the only thing you need to keep in mind is how the moisture content is calculated for solid waste. 
सो लेट मी इनिशिएट दिस क्वेश्चन सो टोटल वेट टोटल वेट टोटल वेट टोटल वेट इज गिवेन एज सिक्सटी टन्स राइट इनिशियल मॉइस्चर कंटेंट एम सी वन इज गिवेन एज ट्वेल्व परसेंट सो इफ मॉइस्चर कंटेंट इज ट्वेल्व परसेंट द वेट ऑफ वॉटर वेट और आई शुड से द इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर इज ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ सिक्सटी इट इज ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ सिक्सटी इट इज ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ सिक्सटी राइट गेट मी दैल्यू ऑफ ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ सिक्सटी गेट मी द इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर गेट मी द इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर क्विकली गेट मी द इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर गेट मी द इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर गेट मी द इनिशियल वेट ऑफ वॉटर it is 7.2 right it is 7.2 so this is 7.2 tons right so this is my initial weight of water if the initial weight of water is 7.2 tons then the weight of solids weight of solids weight of solids weight of solids is 60 minus 7.2 it is 60 minus 7.2 so 60 minus 7.2 quickly get me the answer 60 minus 7.2 it is 52.8 it is 52.8 tons so now if you increase the moisture content this weight of the solid will not going to change right good varsha good 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 hitesh good this weight of the solid will not going to change right so this weight of the solid will going to remain fixed if we talk about the moisture content final moisture content final it has to be 48% it has to be 48% so the weight of the solid will going to remain same this weight of the solid will going to remain same let me assume let me assume let us assume let us assume let us assume new weight of new weight new weight of total solid new weight of total solid waste new weight of total solid waste new weight of total waste i would say with the increased moisture content the new weight of total waste new weight of total waste say x new weight of total waste is x so the weight of water so the final weight of water so the final weight of water final weight of water final weight of water is 0.48 times of x it is 0.48 times of x now we know that weight of solids plus weight of water is equals to the total weight so the weight of solid is 52.8 it is 52.8 plus the weight of water that is 0.48 times of x is equals to the total weight x right get me the value of x quickly get me the value of x get me the quick value of x get me the quick value of x so this is 1 minus 0.48 and 52.8 divided so 101.54 101.54 thank you thank you rupak sir thank you so much thank you so x is x is 101.54 tons this is my final weight this is my final weight of the solid waste with increased moisture content right this is my final weight of the solid waste with increased moisture content so this new weight of water can be calculated which is 0.48 times of my final weight so the new weight of moisture content is new weight of moisture content is new weight of final weight final weight of water final weight of water final weight of water is equals to 0.48 times of the total weight of the solid or the new weight of the solid that is 101.54 this is 101.54 this is 101.54 correct so get me this final weight of water it is 101.54 multiplied by 0.48 which comes out to be 48.74 this is 48.74 tons this is my final weight of water <coughs> right so in order to calculate the amount of water added so amount of water 
amount of water added amount of water added amount of water added is equals to amount of water added is equals to initially present water that is initially present water is initially present water is 7.2 tons so amount of water added is amount of water added is final weight of the water that is 48.74 minus initially present water that is 7.2 tons so get me the final value get me the final value of the expression so 48.74 48.74 minus 7.2 this is 41.54 this is 41.54 tons so this is my final answer same kind of question was present in gate 2022 right in which you have to calculate this kind of thing correct so this is how we started with environmental engineering we have seen the raw water engineering then we have seen the waste water engineering and then we have seen the important concept which are there for solid waste management. My dear students, as I've already told you yesterday that you have decided to appear for gate examination. It will be you who will be just giving 100% of your time for yourself to uplift yourself and to build a beautiful life, right? So almost six months you are done with and you really did a good job. In the last two months, the only thing that you need to focus is practice more the number of questions you will practice the more number of questions you will practice more are the chances that you will get selected or get a good rank in any examination not just gate you will get a good rank in your life and when you get a good rank in gate examination you just uplift up yourself from thousands of the aspirants that are there which are doing the same course in a country like india right so when i talk about gate examination i am talking about developing your logical skills i am develop i am talking about developing your technical skills my dear student so in these last two months just give you 100 percent and get a good rank in a one go so this is all from my side regarding the gate booster series of environmental engineering Thank you so much for being such a patient audience and understanding all the concepts and answering them at the right time. Thank you so much for listening patiently and all the very best from my side. Happy preparing and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.